Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. Welcome to the Pool Chasers Podcast. This is episode nine. In this episode, we interview Hal Denbar of Patriot Pool and Spa. It was a true honor for us to have Hal here in the studio with us all the way from Texas. We met Hal at the Zodiac Symposium, and he actually came up to us by recognizing us as pool chasers, which was the first time. So that was kind of a fun experience for us, for sure. You know, and he talked to us about our Instagram feed and some other things that he had noticed that he liked. And we went back and forth, and we've really, you know, created a friendship with Hal. And it's been an honor for us to have this friendship and develop it. And, you know, we truly respect everything he's doing there in Austin, Texas. So we think this episode was jam-packed full of information and it was just kind of a conversation that flowed very well because it's all about pool service and repair which is what we do here at brothers pool service so we hope you guys enjoy let's jump right into the episode all right well thank you so much for uh visiting us today how appreciate you making a trip all the way here from texas um can you introduce yourself to our listeners uh yeah my name is hal denbar with patriot pool and spa in austin texas uh we basically do swimming pool, weekly swimming pool service, and then equipment repair and installation, serving the whole Austin market. Very good. Um, So we met at the Zodiac Symposium in San Diego, and there was a lot of different people there. It was a really good time. Yeah, we were having the breakfast, and I didn't get a chance. I know you and Ty were talking quite a bit with each other, but... Um, that was the first time that we connected. I well, was, uh, well, what's funny is I reckon, I recognize y'all from pool chasers from Instagram. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Cause yeah. Cause Tyler was wearing the jobber hat and I was like, wait a second. I was like, are you the pool chasers guy? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Put it all together. Yeah. Jobber, pool chasers. Oh my gosh. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So were you using jobber before that point? Yeah. We've used jobber for over four years now. Oh yeah. Snap. We started in 2014. The, the, when I started pulling out of the field and gave up, because the first thing I gave up was repair work. And so I was trying to find a solution to schedule repair guys, and Jobber was what I came across in 2014, and we 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 were still using it. That's cool. How'd you actually come across that? If you don't mind me asking, it's been a long time. Probably yeah. just, probably just googling and searching different oh, okay. different different software solutions. That's cool. Actually, yeah. we had somebody put some stickers on or like vinyl on our uh, the brother shop. And I got an invoice from them and it was super clean. And I'm like, what the heck is this? Yeah. <laughs> and I saw it was like from Jobber. And then obviously, you know how we do it. You know, you go back and you're like, dude, this looks legit. It's all super clean and right. modern. I'm like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I, based on you from the beginning, I didn't want to, once I pulled out of the field, I didn't want to be a company using paper and going old school. And that was, Jobber was the best thing I came across when I was like, how can we do this on iPads and not, not be old school? Um, and it's it's worked well enough. We're still going four years later. Nice. So, I mean, we met, we met there and, you know, we were talking a little bit. Yeah. You said you had saw us from Paul Chaser's Instagram, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, at that time, I don't think it was barely a couple months in. So I think know. y'all had just, maybe we're just releasing the second episode. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, we're about to release the Yelp episode, right? Yeah. 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 It was like, we just released, no, we released episode two that, that morning. Oh, that morning. That's right. So yeah, we had done that overnight and did that morning. And then, yeah, we did that. But I mean, you might, I don't know. Did you see brothers Instagram for a while before that? I think so. Yeah. I mean, you know, Instagram is just like a a fun piece of what we do at Patriot. And you guys obviously have an awesome presence. So you were somebody that, that would pop up in our newsfeed a bunch. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I think that's how we saw you guys first was through the brothers one and then through that one as well. Um, but yeah, we just had a cool conversation. I mean, that was, you're actually the first one that I think called us out for it, which is <laughs> kind of a cool feeling, you know, because <laughs> normally it's just brothers. And then I, it is actually like kind of weird to react to that. Like, oh yeah, that, that is me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was a cool experience. We talked there. What did you, what did you kind of think about the symposium in, in general? I mean, I, I love that thing. It's the second year I've gone and to me, it's the best event in swimming pool service right now. Uh, it's, you know, I've, I've been to the national show, I've been to the Southwest show, I've been to the Jersey show. ZPPN does it better than all of them. Um, yeah. Content wise. And more importantly, I think the networking piece, like that's, that's the biggest value takeaway from what they do uh, outside of the fact. It's just cool watching how they operate as a company. Like that's a company that's got it figured out and done right. Culture wise. Yeah. Um, you see all their people at that ZPPN symposium and they're having a blast. Like they really love working for Zodiac. Yeah. Um, 
And I mean, that's something I'm, I'm striving for at Patriot. So it's cool seeing somebody that's got it, got it nailed. Was there anything in particular that you went there for? Um, really the networking piece. Um, that, that's why, that's why I was so aggressive getting the WhatsApp group together that we started with different pool companies from around, around the country. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, like I mentioned, I, I haven't been in the field in several years. So the, the technical classes I, I could care less about, um, <laughs> I, those, those, those didn't, don't, don't, don't provide much value to me, but the, sure. some of the business ones and more than that, just finding other pool guys to share experiences with. Cause that, that's, I think the biggest, the biggest value that that provides. And, and I'm, I've, I've been trying to encourage them to like increase that aspect of the show. Cause I think that's the only way, the only possible way they can improve it. Cause they're doing it so well is just to continue to sort of open up forums of people sharing experiences rather than having just one person instruct the, yeah. gen- the generational theme was a funny takeaway from that. Like, like there was, there was almost a, generational war between some of the 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 older folks and and the millennials and complaining back and forth and all the different in in the culture group and some some of the different classes each age bracket was complaining about the other one and then it it was it was funny (laughs) that seemed to be the theme of the the event to me um from the feedback of, of people during each each session i think it's a good fight to be honest because the the millennials the younger generation are really on top of the marketing and social media aspect of it all. But I don't think that we know as much as some of the older cats. Oh yeah. So that's kind of the fight where they have the knowledge and we know how to get the business. So I think if I were, you know, part of the older generation, I would be a consultant or something and just (laughs) go work for one of these younger companies and just, you know, make bank doing that because they, they know their stuff. I mean, we have a guy on our team that he's a little bit older, but man, he, dude, he's got, you know, 15, 20 years of knowledge that you can't go to any school. There's no books you can read to know what he knows. Um, So I think there's a really good, you know, kind of fight right there. Yeah. Hopefully we can close the gap a little bit. That's, that's kind of what the podcast is for and, and, you know, building those relationships to try to, we talked about it several times and I continue to talk about it on each episode, but you know, that, that gap of when you go into SCP and it feels just cold and you can't get people to talk to you or information, you just have to like kind of learn on the fly and that's rough. I found that really interesting. I listened to the X pools episode yeah. when you, when you said that specifically, because that is so counter to the experience I've had in mm-hmm. the industry. And, and maybe it's just geographic, like depending on where you happen to be, but in Austin, it has been such a friendly industry. Like I, everything I've learned uh, has been from other pool guys in Austin. Wow! And probably at least once a week, I'm picking up the phone and and talking to another person who hasn't been in it as long and giving them advice or, or sharing an experience. And wow. so, like, it's it's very very counter to what I've experienced because it's it's yeah. been a very open and like sharing environment and and friendly environment in Austin. There are a couple of people that don't don't quite fit into that. You know, there there's some outliers. Um, but for the most part, like, you know, I got involved in IPSA early and APSP and some of these organizations and extremely open and, and friendly environment. That's really cool to hear because that is definitely not how the feeling we have. But at the same time, we, we didn't get involved in IPSA or APSP as, you know, we're, we're looking into APSP right now. But, you know, we kind of grew really quick where IPSA was kind of out of the question, you know, because you have to be under certain they cap it employees. Here. Yeah. Okay. Because they don't, they don't, talk, and at least in Austin. Where, where yeah. I actually just left Ipsa in January, but it was voluntary just because I've right now got a lot on my plate. So I was like, guys, I love this. I'm going to step, take a step back. I'll probably be back someday. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, even with 30 employees, we can still. They can still cover your routes and stuff? Well, no. Um, right. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, but, that, yeah. that's kind of, yeah. I mean, I think the cap is more applied to that. Like, and, and if one so, of your guys is sick, then we're not. Right. Yeah. No, it. it's only for the individual pool owner for sure. Mm-hmm. But to me, the, the primary value I got out of Ipsa was the experience experience sharing like it was finding a peer network of people doing exactly what you're doing and being able to bounce ideas off of them so that that was even after i outgrew ever being the guy cleaning a pool and needing route coverage uh you know i was still getting lots of value out of it for sure nice yeah well that's that's interesting because we definitely should probably pursue that a little bit more on our end of that then maybe maybe we wouldn't be so feel that have that cold feeling i guess but that's interesting here because i think that's pretty cool that's I guess that gives us some uh, hope <laughs> that people are open to sharing, you know? Yeah. So another company, uh, Golki, Golki Pools, yeah. 
Yeah, they're from Denton, Texas, and you're from Texas. So yes. we were just talking about that. Did you happen to go to that HR class? I did, yeah, and it was it was excellent. Um, it was Gol- mind blowing, wasn't it? it? It was. I mean, Golke's just such an impressive guy who runs such an impressive company. Um, they're I mean, they're well known in Texas for doing things the right way, and he's an instructor. I think almost every year at the Southwest Pool and Spa Show, definitely a guy that that I, I try to model things after any chance, like in, any time I get a chance to observe the way they're doing things because they do it right. And and that class was really cool seeing going back to that like takeaway theme from the the ZPPN symposium of the generational gap. Golki has just bridged it as if it didn't even exist. Uh, watching the way he's he's transformed his business to adapt to today's workers. It's been stinking awesome. Like they, they've got, they bring in a barber for haircuts. They have a, a basketball hoop and like rec room inside their office. You know, they're uh, doing meals all the time as a company and community service and parades. Like it's, it's really cool to see the way he's adapt. He, he's, he's identified what makes him an attractive employer or what could make him an attractive employer. And he's executing on, on it, even though it makes him uncomfortable. And, and he, and he was honest, it makes him uncomfortable to do business that way. Cause it's so foreign to him, but he knows that's what it takes. And so he's going to do it. Right. Yeah. I, that was probably my favorite part of the, uh, symposium was listening to them talk about their business and they were seriously sharing every single thing. And it was kind of interesting that they would share so much information because I'm like, well, all these people now can go out and model your business. But even after knowing all that and them sending the paperwork on step-by-step how they do things. I was like, this is still not an easy task, right? You still have to be (laughs) extremely dedicated and all of the above in order to get on their level. Cause it's just, it's not easy. You know what I mean? Cause you still, especially when you're fixing your business up, you have to run the day to day or whatever you're doing at the time and to try and go in and rebrand yourself and market your business, you know, how things are done in 2018. It's all a lot of work. And I got, Nothing but respect for the company and the owner for doing things the way they do now. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool how they just shared their <laughs> interview questions and, you know, their entire employee manual. And, right. And, you know, that was pretty, pretty open, you know, and that's pretty cool that they did that and showed, you know, we, we've we talked about on the web, what's up app several times. You know, some of them don't even have service agreements or some people don't even have employee questions. And it's crazy to see the difference in everything that the way it works everybody does things so differently yeah we, we don't have service agreements we're no contract we're come and go as yeah. you please yeah that's cool nice so tell us a little bit about how you grew up in uh in austin are you you're from austin texas right yeah i'm from i when i was real little i lived in houston but we moved to austin like pre-elementary school so i, I pretty much consider myself native um which there aren't there aren't that many native austinites like we're unicorns <laughs> most we're, we're primarily californians at this point yeah there's a but, ton of people from california yeah. and arizona all over that are moving yeah. they're shifting over to texas i know my my wife's sister actually lives there yeah it's yeah, uh, some other small town but it's in that area but yeah now grew up in austin you know love it went away to to college went to a- texas a&m um to school was, you know combination of the school blew me away when I went to visit plus getting away from where I grew up, um, to go to school and, and, and college is a whole separate sort of tangent I could go off on and, and <laughs> my thoughts on how not important it is, um, in retrospect, but, uh, but then moved back to Austin and started a company immediately. Yeah. So were you cleaning pools when you were in college? I mean, what, what I think that's spark? weird. People just go to Texas A&M. Did you graduate from? I did. Uh, I mean, I was I was a history major with awful grades, which is sort of how I ended up <laughs> in the pool with the pool business. But uh, uh, but yeah, no. My my senior year at A&M, um, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. I, I I'd, I'd had several sort of small businesses from high school up, like a web design company and a film film company and different things, and and I finally, you know, so I thought I was going to teach, but because I was a history major with bad grades, so I mean. I didn't have tons of <laughs> options. Um, I know. What can but, you say? Uh, what, what could you possibly say to the but, students? Come on, you got to get your grades up. What, like you? <laughs> and, and, uh, and so my senior year at A&M, I uh, came across an article that there were more pools built in Austin that year than the whole state of California. Um, and this was 2005 peak construction boom in Austin. And granted, California has already built out with pools. So, yeah. you know, it's not like their construction's probably not as big there as it is in Austin where it's not built out to any degree. Um, so I saw that. I was like, well, I was very naive. I was like, that, that, that can't be rocket science. And I bet 
I bet tomorrow I could do that better than most people are doing it, you know, cause I had no idea how much knowledge there was to mm-hmm. be gained in, in the industry. Uh, so I started looking into it a little bit further, um, realized there were, at that time there was no licensing in the state of Texas, really no, no, no costs to get into the industry. I mean, you know, somebody who was flat broken in debt could start a full service company. Yep. So the pieces were coming together and, uh, decided that that's what I was going to do. So my, my last semester, well, first I, I, Sat my then fiance down and was like, I know I'm, we took her to a fancy Olive Garden dinner. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I know I'm uh, $50,000 in debt and don't have a job lined up and, you know, don't necessarily have the best prospects, but I'm going to go start cleaning swimming pools. And this is what I'm going to do this is the future. And uh, fortunately, she didn't get up and walk away. Um, what was actually sort of fateful is that she was like, well, she, was, she immediately was like, okay, I'm on board. I was like, whoa, okay, that's awesome. And uh, what I didn't didn't know at that time was her dad, who had been a serial entrepreneur, his first business was a swimming pool business uh, in West Texas. And oh, so, no so she was like, I've already seen this movie. I know, I know how it goes. Like, let's do it. Um, wow. But uh, so my last semester, I only had three classes left, and they were all electives. So I moved back to Austin and got a job cleaning pools and looked at it basically as an internship. Um, and so did my last three electives at Austin Community College and started cleaning pools. And then as soon as I graduated that May, uh, June 6th, I started the uh, Patriot Pool and Spa. Wow. That's yeah. a really cool story. I want to dive into, uh, you know, your is, your, is your wife now or your girlfriend? Yeah, yeah Laura. Yeah, oh, my wife. nice. Yeah, I'd love to hear uh, his story on that. Um, let's go back a little bit. So what were you doing, you know, during, you know, elementary and high school? Did you play sports or anything like that? Did you do anything competitive? Uh, yeah, growing up, uh, martial arts was my thing. Um, was really big into Taekwondo, um, highly competitive in it, like ended up winning state sometime in, I think was it early middle school, went to the junior Olympics and like, that was really my thing. Uh, but then like football started in Texas. That's, that's it. So I was like, that's for, what you do. forget Taekwondo, even though I'm really good <laughs> at that. Let's go be moderate, like, okay at football. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I don't have any regrets about it. It was a blast. And, uh, so yeah, football and wrestling, uh, going through high school. Oh, very cool. So you do like Pop Warner football and high school football? No, I didn't, I didn't start football till, till middle school. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. My parents didn't want me to, be, <laughs> didn't allow me to play until eighth grade. Oh, yeah. yeah I didn't want you concussions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, there's a good argument for that. Yeah. I've been knocked out several mm-hmm. times. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> so it was like Karate Kid, your favorite movie? Uh, No, it was, uh, no. But I mean, no. I just, the I, I was a big film geek. Like I said, mm-hmm. I had a film company. Like mm-hmm. that's. I paid for my freshman year of college by buying video cameras and filming everything senior year and editing it together and selling it to everybody's parents for 20 bucks a pop. That's sweet. But, uh, but, but no, I was a karate kid was never my thing. No. How'd you get in? How'd you get in Taekwondo? Three three ninjas. There we go. Oh, uh, I don't even remember how we got in. I started it in like third grade. Um, I think we just walked by a place after a family dinner and was like, that looks fun. Started it up and, and then <laughs> yeah. it became obsessive where we were there like seven days a week. I think a lot of people our age, that Karate Kid is like the intro into that. Yeah. Like they saw that movie and they just wanted to do it. I don't know. I saw Karate <laughs> Kid after because it was like yeah. three ninjas and then sidekick with Chuck Sidekicks, Norris. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Surf ninjas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's all, there all kinds <laughs> oh, of yeah. karate movies. I, can't, I don't even know how I didn't do karate. Oh, my grandma does karate. I did a really? little bit at her studio. People are probably listening to this oh, tripping yeah, out like awesome. grandma does what? So what's, what's funny is like <laughs> any, anytime like two truths and a lie or something like that comes up, one of the facts I'll always throw out there is I've, I've beaten up Willie Nelson. Uh, and it's cause he was like, I was the only kid in the adult class and he was the oldest adult. So like we'd always end up getting partnered up. And Willie so Nelson? Like, yeah, Willie Nelson. Really? And so, uh, and so, yeah. So like on a weekly basis as an 11 year old, I was always beating up on Willie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That in all awesome. fairness, though, was he high or was he? I don't know. I mean, he he seemed ancient then, <laughs> and so granted, I was eleven, but <laughs> see pictures of him back in the like sixties and seventies. He looks ancient. <laughs> yeah, he does. It's all right. I don't think Willie Nelson's going to hear this. <laughs> he know. starts a pool company. Yeah. Well, and, he, and, 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 he, and he's a badass now. He's been doing it ever since then. He's like a God knows what degree black belt. Yeah, that's pretty. Oh, cool. Yeah, Willie Nelson's rad. I like Willie Nelson, <laughs> but he looks old. So that's cool. Um, you did some football and stuff like that. Was there anything in particular growing up that you think really made you who you were and, you know, got you into college and made you kind of 
an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think on the entrepreneurial side, my dad growing up, he he's a dentist that owned his own practice and always was interested in getting involved in other ventures and still has ventures he's, he's working on getting off the ground today. He just would pound into my head all the time, like never work for anybody else, like figure out really? your own path. Like, like, you know, you'll, you will always be happier if you're in control of your own destiny. So like, I mean, I heard that all the time growing up, like don't, there's no reason to ever go work for somebody else. You can figure it out on your own, go do something on your own. And so that was just like, I mean, that, I think that's just was ingrained into me. That, that was the way it was going to be. And don't you think the point of going to college, especially such a renowned college like Texas A&M, the whole point is to go there, get education, get a degree and go get an office <laughs> go job. For somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To a degree. And I think, I think that was, that's part of why I have issues with, with our culture in the way we look at college. Like l- looking back at it, I, you know, for coming from my dad being a dentist. So he was, he was a pretty successful guy. Um, he was a doctor, made good income, had his own practice. Like it was just the next step that was expected of me to go to college. Like there was no alternative to not go to college. And so, and, and, and it was all academic too. Like I didn't even think of like functional trade skills. Like I remember as a freshman going, wait, construction science, like that's a college degree. Why would anybody study that in college? But now I'm like, that's freaking brilliant. Why didn't I spend four years Should've doing construction that. science? Like, <laughs> sure. Um, and so like, I, you know, I, I feel like the, I, that, that was just the path I was supposed to go on and it wasn't necessarily a great path. I mean, it was a path that led to lots of debt and, and time that could have been spent income producing and doing other things. And, 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 you know, and I had a blast, like, I mean, I, Aggie football is probably one of the things I'm most passionate about. Like there's lots of things about that time. I'd never, I'd never get back, but, um, but I don't know that I paid as much money for it as I did. Like it, sure. it's, you know, I, I think it's, it's sort of a, a sickness of our society, just strapping people with debt with no, no in game. Yeah. That's definitely the next industry that's going, <laughs> it's going to go away. I mean, it's, it's just, it just takes kids, puts them in $200,000 with a debt and for nothing, you know, we could talk about that for a long time, yeah. <laughs> but I think well, we have the same, and, same mentality. Yeah, as and, you and, do and especially what, what's shocking to me. And this is like, totally tan- going on a tangent but oh, um, let's go with it the <laughs> you know when hiring people right when we you know i'll post a technician a job post for a technician and we might get two people over the course of two weeks that'll respond to it um for the first time ever i posted a job and this was probably two or three months ago for an executive assistant in a week i got 130 resumes 128 of them had bachelor's degrees and it's, it's a position that the technical position has way more upward mobility Sure. Um, or potentially has way more upward mobility. Um, so out of the, out of those 130 of, of which 128 had bachelor's degrees, I ended up hiring one of the two that doesn't have a bachelor's degree and she's a badass. Um, and so it's interesting, like people just don't want to get their hands dirty, uh, you know, and, and they feel like sitting in an office is, <laughs> is more prestigious than going out and earning a living, you know, with your hands and, and, and having potentially a much brighter future as a result. What made you choose her? You know, if you had all those other people with degrees, um, her, her, her speech, her writing voice, it wrote a cover letter that, that to me most mimicked the way I write, which is going to be a big part of the position. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then really just her, uh, her motivation desire. She came in and she had researched the company thoroughly. She already knew sort of how we did things. And I mean, it was, it was as if she was already a part of the team, yeah. um, where most everybody that had a bachelor's just sent a blanket resume with no nothing else and so they just went straight in the trash can because there was there was no no identity to it huh i think that's pretty cool i mean that's we just hired an office admin too and that was a lot of big part of that was the ability to write emails and think the same way you know we kind of do and that's that's probably what how you felt in that transition you know being able to communicate with customers the way you guys do is is a big part of it absolutely and people that have bachelor's degrees that i mean you just went through four years of college doesn't mean you have experience with anything you know exactly yeah. and i can't help but notice that the way you hold yourself and the way you speak you can tell that you are educated and i think that definitely separates you from most other people and companies so with that being said do you do you still kind of regret having that education because you still have a, a way with your words and you know what you're doing and obviously you probably wouldn't be as good as you are if you didn't have you know that education behind you I think some of that might have come from AM. I don't think it came from classroom curriculum. I think okay. it came from like my main focus. Like I said, I was an awful student. Like I got involved in every leadership organization I could find and like tried to work my way to the top of those and like surround myself just with relationships and working with people all the time. But I feel like 
I feel like a lot of that was just, I was very fortunate to grow up where I grew up in a, in a solid community in Austin that I think sort of was foundational. Uh, That's more as far as the presentation, you. I think, yeah, the, yeah, I think, I think that would, I, but I mean, you're very topic. well, I mean, you're very well, well spoken and you, you can put your words together. I mean, a lot of people in this industry, you know, either just start as a pool guy and then decide that they are sick of working for somebody else and then do it themselves. And what, what's, but, int- what struck me, and I've totally forgotten about this. It's been years since I've even thought about this, but you bring that up, um, was like the first few years I was in, in the industry as a one, one man pool shop out cleaning pools, like the sociology of how customers would treat me was totally different if they knew I went to college or not, mm. um, which I found like really shocking, like people, they'd be talking to me in, in one way. And then I would just happen to bring up like, you know, oh yeah, well I just graduated from A&M last year and I'm starting this company and, and they would do a, a 180 mm. in, in the way they interacted with me. I was like, really? Like that's sort of crappy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's weird how that happens. Cause even when we're doing some of the initial bids and things like that and they're, they kind of ask, you know, what's your position? Will I ever see you again? Yada, yada, yada. It's like, well, I'm one of the two owners. I probably, just to be honest, we'll go back and forth through email or maybe a phone call, but you probably won't see me again. I'm like, oh, you're one of the one of the brothers. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> but it's just kind of, it's weird how everything changes. Not that, well, sometimes they could be kind of rude. It's been a little while, but it's kind of crappy to think that if anybody else were there, they would right. be a different way. Well, you know what I mean? and I'll get that feedback from, from our guy sometimes of somebody that I've only interacted with over the phone and sweetest person in the world from all my interactions. And they'll be like, this person is the biggest asshole in the world. I'm like, really? And I'm realizing it's, <laughs> they're, they're treating people differently based on, on what they treat them like the doing. help. Like, yeah. Like it's, status. It's, somebody like, cleaning pool. it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then, you know, we'll, we'll pivot sort of how we respond to that customer. Um, you yeah. know, once, once somebody reveals true colors, they, it impacts the way we interact with them. For sure. <laughs> you have to, you have to act that way. I mean, we've, I mean, we've made that commitment to our guys and you know, it's, you have to, you have to do that and go with your guys, you know? Well, and, and that's, and that's actually, so the rare times we fire customers, it's almost yeah. always based on an interaction like that. Yep. Um, and, and that's where it's like, okay, now it's cause, cause sadly the only time I really interact with customers these days is if it gets to where we got to fire somebody or, or like shit really hit the fan. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't get to have, as many fun, positive customer interactions as I'd like anymore. <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, usually it's like, like somebody just screaming at one of our guys and, and or shaming them in some ridiculous way. And it's like, just having to call and be like, we can't, we can't work with you anymore. It's just not, <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't help. Yeah. <laughs> so, so coming out of school, I mean, you know, my thought seeing the growth of the Austin market was that I could grow a big company. I didn't know how I was going to do it because I didn't know anything about anything at that point. I was totally naive to how much knowledge there was to be gained in the industry and business in general. Like I, I took an accounting class that I got a D in in college and that's the, <laughs> like the, the foundation of my, my business acumen. <laughs> sure. And so, uh, so I just started cleaning pools with one account. Um, and that was in Hutto, Texas, which is like a real outlying suburb of Austin. And there was a retail store in Round Rock that I just decided I was going to start hitting them up and bribing them with pizza and donuts and whatever I could do to get them to hand out my business card. Um, and Did that work? Yeah, it totally worked. So, so the whole, the first five years in business when it was just me, basically every referral that wasn't a word of mouth, once I would gain them from this retail store was coming from that retail store. Um, that retail store ended up being bought out by Leslie. So then that got shut down, which I was very fortunate to like have gotten a base of pools big enough at that point where, you know, I could still survive without that lead source. But, um, had that happened earlier, it would have been bad news for, for the future of Patriot. But, and what, what year was this exactly? Uh, you say 2005? Well, I, sta- I started in, in 2006. Okay. Um, yeah. June, 2006 is when we started the company. And so, you know, until about 2011 ish, it was just me. Um, and it took me forever to get to 40 pools, which was sort of like the sustainable number I needed to hit. Yep. Um, was really fortunate that like, so, so my, uh, my wife and I, we got married right out of college. So like I started the company June 6th, 2006, we got married June 11th, 2006. So she was a teacher, um, which I thought I was going to go into. Um, so, you know, fortunately we were able to subsidize the early years of Patriot on her teacher salary. Um, and you know, lots of, lots of beans and rice and, <laughs> and the Dave Ramsey snowball to get rid of our, yeah. my, my student deck. Cause she came out with none, but, uh, wow. but it was, uh, 
yeah, I mean, it was just, it took forever. It seemed like to build up a, a sustainable route. Um, but I guess three years in is when I hit about 40 pulls on route. Um, and felt pretty good for year four and five. I started to doubt myself of, Hey, I came out of school thinking I was going to build a big company. Like it's still just me cleaning pools, which, you know, I, I, I could make a good living. I enjoyed that my day to day life, like everything, there was nothing wrong, but it wasn't what I'd envisioned I was going to be doing. Um, and how are you learning all this stuff? I mean, it was, that's kind of the, the big yeah. thing is when you first start off, you don't go to, you know, pool service school. YouTube wasn't much of a thing. YouTube in, in, wasn't around yeah. really. But yeah. Um, it, it pretty much the way I did it was because once I left my like quote unquote internship of my last semester of school, when I was cleaning pools for somebody else, all I really knew was how to clean pools. I didn't know anything on the repair side. Um, so as I started gaining accounts, like the, the my main focus was customer service. Like I was, cause I didn't know anything about pools. So I had to out customer service everybody else and just gain a rapport with customers where they just, they knew they were going to get taken care of. And so whether it was going to be me doing it or me finding a solution in another way, to, you know, bring somebody else in to get it done. Like in the end, they knew they were going to be taken care of. Um, so what I started to do was I wouldn't start to try to fix equipment until I knew I had enough money in the bank to fix it. If I screwed it up and I could hire somebody else to come do it. Right. Um, and so basically I just kept working my way up like, okay, today, I guess I got enough money to buy a pump. If I screw up a pump, let's try to fix a pump and, and just started working my way up the equipment chain. I mean, it took me about five years before I finally was brave enough to start messing with heaters. Um, and, and there's still certain things like to this day, I, I, I've never messed much with lights. Like by, by the time I was going to start messing with lights, I'd already hired my first repair guy. Um, so there's definitely some things I'm still quite ignorant on, um, equipment wise, but, but yeah, that was, that was the model. And so about year five, uh, we finally hit the point where we could hire, hire the first guy. Um, some, there were some, some bumpy spots bringing on the first employee that would stick. Uh, cause at that point, you know, it, we weren't actually a company. It's not like we had values and what we knew what we were looking for. And like, it was still just like, Oh, uh, you can do the job. Come on. Like, and, and I don't know how to, how to really guide you to do the job, but we're going to figure it out. You know, it was all putting out fires all day, every day. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and so did that with one guy for a year and then a year later added another guy. Uh, and then right at the beginning of 2014 is when I decided, you know, we've got a couple there's a couple of people working for us. I think we can start to pivot and make this a real. Were you still doing repairs thing. at that point? Oh yeah, for so sure. So you had two yeah. service so I, techs and then you were doing repairs. Yeah. So I, I had two guys cleaning pools full time. I was probably cleaning pools three days a week and repairing pools three or four days a week. Okay. Yeah. Um, and well, what kind of repairs were you doing at that time? Uh, basically everything but lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, so when you, let's go back a little bit when you were, just by yourself with 40 pools, who was doing your repairs for you? Uh, me. And, and if it was a heater, I'd refer it out to a, to a friend or something. Somebody I'd gotten to know through it. So, so you didn't have somebody you referred repairs. So what if, what about the first couple of years you were cleaning pools? If something happened, what'd you do? Uh, I'd either figure it out or, or refer it out. Yeah. Yeah. You'd refer it to another company. Exactly. And yeah. you just, you still kept the pool. Yeah. 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 So, I, so I got about a year. I, I tried to join Ips as soon as I got in the industry mm -hmm. and they basically told me, you don't know what you're doing. Go away. Come back in a year once you figured out a little bit about pools because we don't want to insure you. Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> came back a year later and, and was able to get into IPSA. And then from there, I started building a network of uh, of people in the industry that like could advise me and or I could send them business if it was something that was out of my league. Um, so it began, began to develop a really good network in the industry. Yeah. Um, and my whole take on like IPSA and then and other things in the industry, I was always like, I always wanted to get on the board so that I was around the smartest people in the room. And sure. so that I, I was just like as close as possible to sponge in knowledge. Um, so I was always really gung ho about getting involved in everything. Um, but yeah, it was all, it was all just school of hard knocks and, and people being kind and generous with their time to help, help teach when, when, when it called for that. Yeah. So out here we have a big mix of, you know, sand filters, DE filters, cartridge filters, uh, certain types of automation is, you know, kind of more dominant in certain uh, parts of town. Is it pretty much all the same out there? Is there, um, you know, is there any big changes? I know you were kind of out here looking at some different pools. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, it, so we're, we're definitely a, a D, DE heavy market, uh, then cartridges and sand. We're very automated. Like I was surprised listening to the X pools one about how automation uh, seems less common out here. I mean, I'd, I'd say 
the overwhelming majority of pools we have are automated. And when it comes to new pools, I'd say 95 percent. Because yeah. you, that's because your your market has started growing over the last couple five or six years. Yeah. Or even 10 years, I guess, since you said you heard about them growing more. That's why. I mean, ours has been around for. Exactly. Yeah, we have pools that, that are sense. 40 years old. I guess yeah. that makes, that makes but, total sense. Nice. So speed things up a little bit. Um, you were telling us a little bit that you had kind of, you know, got some more accounts, more people on the team. And then you're like, you know what, we need to rebrand, restructure. Because I know when you first started, being an entrepreneur wasn't what it is now. Now it's like everybody's doing it. It's the cool thing to do. Right. Own your own company. Mission statements. There's a, you know, there's blogs everywhere about how to do things the right way. Um, so I'm sure with all that happening, you're like, you know what, let's, let's do things a little bit different. Let's give this company a facelift. You want to talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, so the beginning of 2014 was like what I'd call the modern era where we really needed to make the transition to a quote unquote real company. And, and I, and, and I say that, and, and some of the guys back at Patriot will laugh when I say that, cause I say that like all the time, like any, <laughs> anytime there's a new development in the company, I'm like, yes, we're a real company now. Like. <laughs> Um, <laughs> legitimize it <laughs> for sure. Um, so yeah, so every, every step we take of progress, we, we become a real company. Um, but the, yeah, so 2014, it was, there were, I had two guys cleaning pools. I was doing everything else and said, okay, now we have a little bit of traction. I think we can, you know, do something to become a real company. And so I went and I guess the, the, the first step was beginning of February that year. Um, there were two people that I talked with that, blew me away in interviews. Like one guy I'd known, he, he worked at the, the warehouse pool supply where I started getting referrals out of back in the day. He was the assistant manager back then. I'd known him as long as I'd been in the industry. He approached me and said, Hey, can I come work for you? And it was a no brainer to me. He super technical, you know, very tech savvy, knew exactly what he was doing. I was like, okay, I got to hire this guy. That same week I interviewed another guy who I'd happened to find on Craigslist. Um, that just blew me away in the interview. I was like, I got to hire this guy too. Like both these guys are amazing. I was only planning on hiring one guy. I'm like, well, fuck it. Let's hire both and see what happens. <laughs> um, and so there was no real, uh, game plan or budget to hire both guys, but. So, so how were you able to afford that? Uh, I mean, one payroll at a time, um, and see if the business came and if, if, if we could produce enough to sustain it. And, uh, and so, you know, made that leap. And had a little bit of, of nest egg set, set aside that um, from the last several years, because again, we were, we were living basically on my wife's teacher salary and everything that Patriot was making was either being spent on Patriot or being saved for Patriot. Um, and so had about 15,000 set aside that I went to a, uh, a media branding company in Austin and was like, we're a three person company. What can you do to make us look like we're the biggest company in town? Um, and they're like, well, we can do a lot to make that happen. Let's, let's, redo your brand. Let's make a badass website. You know, let's that's easy. Like we love challenges. You just gave us a challenge. We're going to do it. So we spent $5,000 on the brand piece, um, which was a fortune, you know, uh, since I only had 15,000, um, yeah. we went through a process of identifying, you know, what, what, what was, what is still, you know, still our current logo and branding. Um, and then we, we redid our website and we purposely made it look very different than all the sort of boilerplate websites that every other pool service company in Austin had. Somebody pulled up five pool websites in, in Austin. We wanted ours to look totally different than the rest. So they're like, well, let's, let's look more at these guys. Um, so in like the span of about two months, I hired two guys. I didn't know if I could afford. And I spent basically all the money we had on redoing our brand. And then we started taking off like a rocket ship. We hired six technicians that year. Um, and that just sort of started the snowball. And we've been adding five or 10 a year since. Nice. So back to rebranding, because that's kind of more my department. How important do you think that really was, was really going back and forth with, say, the graphic designer and choosing the logo? Were you thinking about how it was going to look on the shirt, the hat, the website? On, ev on everything. Somebody yeah. comes up to the front door. Was that that important to Absolutely. you? Absolutely. I mean, especially because I was spending a, a third of the money I, I had, in, you know, it, so, so yeah, it was whatever this could be on one. I want it on everything and I want to consider how it's going to look on everything. And the process was actually a lot of fun and really cool going through different, uh, sort of vision boards and finding things that like I really identified with and that I thought our brand really could identify with and, and narrowing things down to, to what our final logo would be. Um, but we really wanted to focus on, on Austin and being like essentially Austin's pool company. Um, 
and being sort of funky and, and cool and modern, um, like, you know, Austin's identity is. And, uh, and so that was, that was a real big piece of what we, what we wanted to come away with. And I mean, it, it some, something must've worked with what they did. Cause I mean, the, the, the growth that that combined with the people we brought on at the right time, you know, really, really started proving out. Yeah, it's definitely an eye catcher. I mean, just looking at the shirt you're wearing right now, it definitely sticks out. It doesn't look like your normal, you know, pool service and repair company, just like brothers logo. It doesn't look like your typical, um, pool company logo. And it's crazy because there's a lot of people that have these, uh, logos made for, you know, 20 bucks right. online where they're just dishing them out. You put in your, the name of the company and then they'll spit out a logo and they don't really see the ROI in having, you know, say a thousand to 5,000 put into a logo and different things like that. But it's, it's crazy important. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, the, it's almost a must it's too, it's, it's, it's competitive right now. And even more so you want to have that you want to have something that you invested in. It really like mirrors who you are. Right. You know what I mean? Like I wanted, when we were talking about branding and the logo and things like that, it was really important to have that mom and pop shop like feel to it. No matter how big we are, you could look at the logo and things like that. And it just kind of like looks like the good old boys, you know, mom and pop shop right. spot. And it's just crazy how important that is. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, so let's jump into Patriot Pool and Spa a little bit. Um, can you just tell us about the differences, you know, between you and other companies in Austin? You know, your guys' culture and you know how you kind of go out about your day to day stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so, so starting with sort of our, our culture and identity from the very beginning, and 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 like I go through this, and, and anytime we interview somebody, sort of giving the the backstory of who we are to build to who we are today and who we want to be. Um, we were a customer service company first because when I started Patriot, I didn't know anything about pools, so I had to be a customer service focused person as our, as our top priority. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've really carried that through, I think over time, like that's still we're a customer service company that happens to service swimming pools, you know, not vice versa. Um, and so what we're looking for when we hire people there, there's very distinctive traits. Like our core values are, and, and we, we've actually just really solidly identified these in the last 12 months. And, and we're still in the process of like making them, public knowledge to everybody in the company, which like, sadly we haven't done yet during our hiring process. They've been an integral piece for the last couple of years, but, but we haven't publicized them internally as much as we should. But what we look for is positive attitudes, the ability to communicate at a high level, passion for good work and accountability. Like to me, if, if, if they have, if somebody has those four qualities, they're an instant fit on the team. It's, it's almost impossible for them to fail, you know, and, that's, that's exactly who we're wanting for, like who we're looking for. Because if you've got somebody that's happy doing what they're doing, they enjoy doing what they're doing and they communicate that well, everybody wants to be surrounded by that person. Like, you, you, you know, nobody, nobody dislikes happy people that can communicate well and like what they're doing. Sure. Um, and so that's just sort of who we're looking for. And, and as a result, like, I think that's been a, a big piece of our growth has been identifying people with those traits and bringing them onto the team because it's contagious and po positivity it gets more positivity and people just want to be surrounded by it. And so we have a very drama free, fun place to work because we've got a bunch of badasses on the team. <laughs> <laughs> are you usually looking for people that are within the industry or does it not really matter? I mean, not just obviously the service techs and repair guys, but um, even like admin and stuff like that, usually looking for people that have been somewhat in the industry. It's been all over the map. Um, at different times of the company early on we i couldn't find anybody that was in the industry so we started training people from scratch um 2014 those two big hires i mentioned very experienced people in the industry like those those two hires added 30 years of experience in swimming pools to the company um and for a while we went on a streak of only hiring experienced people because we were we were starting to develop a, a culture that people wanted to be a part of uh as far as doing it differently than sort of the old school more taskmaster grinded out companies we were we were creating a little more millennial lifestyle uh version of of what the pool service industry could be and so we as a result we weren't we weren't looking to poach people from other companies but people were approaching us saying like hey this looks fun can i come join up so we hired a lot of experienced people in a row we got to the point where we had so much experience on the team we we're like we need to start multiplying this and and so we started we started transitioning to bringing in only fresh blood and training them up from the from ground zero is it difficult for your team to adjust to change? So I know that I think we have similar stories 
and we're constantly having to take on new software and different processes and different things like that. How's your team been with, you know, adapting to changes? I think they've been really good with it. I think that's always a challenge for any team. Um, I think, I think as entrepreneurs, we thrive on change. Like that's, I want change every day. Like mm-hmm. I'm constantly looking, how can we change? How can we do things different? But I think, I think that drives a lot of people crazy. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm impressed daily with how, how well our team adapts when I throw crazy crap at them. But I, I think, yeah, I think I, I think I'm a challenge to them, uh, uh, in terms, of, I know my, like the, the guys on my management team, I drive them a little crazy with how all over the place I can be with, yeah. with change. I mean, it must mean something. <laughs> you came all the way here to Arizona to look at some pool software and how it could help your business. And I know we feel the same way where we always think, this new piece of software is going to make the business run so much better. And most of the time it does, but there's always something else that we're like, but now it's like, is this really going to help us? Because we, I don't think we can throw one more thing at these people before they're like, dude, you guys need to stick to what you're doing. Right. You know what I mean? And we do it really well, but you know, it's kind of cool seeing how you guys do stuff and just how they adapt to it. But now, I mean, you learn something from every situation and now it's like, we really need to be, think this all the way through. Is this something that we can see ourselves using for, you know, at least five years or something? For sure. Well, it's not just the software piece. It's, it's like, I know my, one of my greatest weaknesses is not my greatest weakness as a leader is my, my ADD for whatever new idea it is, whether it's a new process or a new, you know, incentive program or a new, whatever it is that, that all bounce idea to idea before it's, it's actually come to fruition. Um, and so I'll, I'll pivot before the rest of the team realizes we pivoted and, and yeah, so I know that can drive, drive people to insanity. <laughs> Do you find like, <laughs> kind of sounds like me a little bit. Yes. Yeah. A drive bit. people crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find if you hire people from other companies that they struggle a little bit to do things your way, um, as far as the Patriot way, uh, hit or miss. Uh, yeah. I, f- I feel like that's actually, that happens. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people though, we give a lot of, we give people a lot of freedom in the way they do their job. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we've really, and this sounds cheesy, but like watch some people blossom and like flourish in ways that like coming from very, uh, heavy handed environments and very micromanaged, um, I've, we've even had people on the team that like, we've been warned about, like, you don't want to hire this person, you know, because of this, this or that. And once we get them on the team and we just like, Hey, we trust you. We know, you know, here are the tools, to do the job, do the job. And you need support. Let us know if you need backup, let us know. And we've watched people really, you know, mature and develop into true pros. Uh, and it's been yeah. really cool. And, and, and as a result, we've had, we had really good retention for our industry. You know, I think I think I think some of that is has been the system that's been in place. A lot of that's just the environment of having so many other A players on the team that people I think are sort of rise to the to the level of, of who they're surrounded with. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've been we've been pretty, I think, more fortunate than we could be in terms of how people have adapted. Um, yeah, I mean, you're pretty progressive as are we, and you know, like we're using softwares and different things that you didn't want to, you know, you didn't want to go paper and pen, you know, when I to go to iPads, things like that. I think a lot of people, you know, that have experienced industry are used to that, you know, and making that transition, you know, from paper and pen to iPads or to using software to record chemical logs, things like that. You know, I think that sometimes can be an issue for a lot of people. That's, that's typically, so when we hire somebody with experience, that's really the only training we do is we'll have somebody ride, we'll have them ride along in the truck for a week or two just to learn the technology piece mm-hmm. um, and learn protocols. Cause you know, if they've got, if, if they, if they know the industry and we'll figure out in those two weeks, if, if what they've told us is true and if they actually know the industry or not. Um, but most of it's the tech learning. Yeah. How do your techs report if there's issues with the equipment or things? Uh, so we have, uh, uh, sort of home cooked PDFs. Uh, we call them repair request forms that they'll mention what, you know, the date, the customer, what they've seen, how urgent is it? Like we have a three tier urgency thing. Is the customer aware of it? Cause if the customer's aware of it, it's always urgent because you know, they don't know whether it's urgent or not. Uh, and then details. And then we have, um, so Slack is a, uh, an app we use all day, every day for uh, cool. internal communication. And so we have an equipment picks thread on there. Uh, where then the technician will throw the pictures up there that the repair manager can, he gets the email request. He'll print it out. He'll usually print out a stack of them and put them in order of urgency. And then he can find the pictures he needs on the equipment, pick thread, and send out a quote. And 
So your whole team sees all the pictures from the equipment every, pictures, the thread, equipment yeah. pictures thread. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can you run that offline? Uh, Slack? Yeah. I don't think so. No. You're talking about the, is a PDF what you upload into Slack or? Uh, so the PDF, they just email straight to the repair manager. Oh, okay. um, it, but they post, from they post the pictures. Yeah. So all our, all our techs, all of our cleaning techs have iPads in the field. All our repair techs are on iPhones. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. They don't mind bringing the iPads with them everywhere. Oh, those are kind of pain in the butt sometimes. Yeah. Well, so, so, you know, they, they stay on the truck unless they're going out to take a picture or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if they have a repair thing, you have to take the iPad to the backyard and take a picture. Yeah. They run back, take some pictures. And have you lost over. iPads that way? A couple, um, <laughs> yeah. less than you would think. I think, right. I think we've lost two or three over, over four years. That's pretty good. We so, lost one tablet. I think that's, that's been it. All the phones go, and tablets are on. Didn't it go into the pool? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the yeah, yeah I was going to say loss yeah. is, is a kind way of saying <laughs> yeah. either it, smashed, yeah. <laughs> run over by a truck. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Dropped in the pool. Dropped in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> we netted it out. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of still worked. Just, uh, after that, put it in rice. So talking about pools, how, what's the average time you guys spend in a backyard or the service technicians? Uh, very seasonal. Um, so as, as a company policy, we have a 20-minute minimum um, that we expect our technician to be on site at least 20 minutes. Uh, because there are there are times you're in the dead of winter and in the, in the heat of summer, you could get in and out of, of many pools that are on our route in probably 15 to 20 minutes. Um, from the, the customer like value prop side, though, we want to be able to show the customer that we're, Is you that- know, is that because of because the weather allows that, or, uh, or just because that time of year, not much is getting in the water? Like, like basically, you're doing chemistry, brushing the walls, and, and there's so not much probably nothing in the pool. from the trees or something. Yeah. Okay, exactly. So you're just walking up on a pretty clean pool. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we want to make sure that if a customer calls in and says, "Hey, I don't, I don't know if if so and so was here for long enough, or if he came," that like if we check the GPS, we can say, "No, he was here for you know 24 minutes." Here's a screenshot of him on site. Um, so basically like we come up with that rule so that we can back up our guys because if we're on site for 12 minutes, we can't back that up. Like that's, we can't charge a customer for that. We're going to end up giving it away for free. Um, so, so that rule is, is, is not a like authoritarian rule. It's like, let us have your back because if you don't do at least this, we can't even pretend to have your back because it's not justifiable. Sure. Um, but the seasonality comes in where in the fall and then the spring, those visits can double or triple easily. I mean, you know, to be in a backyard an hour plus isn't totally unusual in the in the fall or the spring you pay your I man you kind of so you you're averaging that's just average throughout their pay you know i think you do a salary yeah right? we, we salary guys yep. um and, and and it evens out you know the they're getting paid the same no matter what time of year it is but you know life is much easier in the winter and summer than it is in the fall and the spring sure. the spring is the big like okay you know this sucks. Buckle down. Can I get, can I get through the next month and a half, two months? Um, cause it's, it's no fun being a pool cleaner in Austin in the spring, yeah. but the rest of the year usually makes it, makes it worth it. What Take the good with the bad, huh? Yeah. What kind of trees are you dealing with? That- Live oaks are the, are the miserable part of spring. Mm. Yeah. So we get, we get the leaves and then we get the pollen and the pollen is, is as bad or worse than the leaves. Yeah. We have that from the, the Palo Verdes of those little, little yellow flowers. The same thing. It's, it's awful. <laughs> so when did you switch to salary? Uh, we've done that from the very beginning. Uh, oh. and, and the main reason, there's no like, no mastermind plan behind <laughs> it. It was, I'm too busy to figure out payroll math each week. Like, here's a flat number. Um, and so, you know, we, we've we, and we've never evolved past that. We're, we're exploring the idea of evolving on our repair side to another format. Um, but that's just started because it was easy and, and have never changed it. That's kind of a opposite. I think a lot of what the industry does see like a per pool basis or, you know, an hourly basis. And I think what you're talking about with the repair side, is kind of doing like piecework pay, right? That, I mean, we're, we're exploring several options right. on the repair side. Yeah. Um, but basically, yeah, I, I set up a shitty system on the repair side from the get go, as far as yeah. being a sustainably like profitable division for the way it should be. And, and because of the, I put a very light workload on our techs, um, and, uh, and, and they might, they might argue with it being a light workload, but, um, but it, it's, it's, you know, they're, our guys are probably working 30 to 35 hours a week. You know, they're not putting in tons and tons of time and in that, and to a degree, that's the way we like it, especially on the cleaning side. Like we want, we want to be a company where be here for a short amount of time, kick ass while you're here, go do something else you're passionate about, you know, whether it's art or we have some, some chefs on staff, we've got some musicians like you know, 
this doesn't have to be your life. I, you know, if you want to be miserable and grind out 60 to 70 hours a week, like there's plenty of places you can do that. Like we're going to try to do something different. That's nice. cool. So do you guys do anything special? You guys like have events or anything like that? Yeah, uh, we do. Uh, we've done F1 is in Austin. We've gone out to the F1 race before. Uh, we've done some brewery tours. We'll have parties at the office. I don't know. We try to do them once a quarter or so. Sometimes I get, I fall behind on, on scheduling those well. We've, we've had some cool uh, awards we've gotten in the past where we'll take the team to go do that. So, I mean, we're always, we're looking for ways to have fun for sure. Like that's, that's something that we, we know is important. We want to try to prioritize when we can. Is that difficult to do with such a large team? It's getting more difficult. It's pretty <laughs> stinking expensive sometimes, but yeah. it's, but it's, I mean, it's worth it. Well, I mean, worth you know, it. Yeah, for sure. So you want to tell us a little bit about the size of Patriot Pools at this point in time? Uh, yeah, we have about 30 people on the team right now. Um, I think 29, I think, technically. Um, and I say that because like, we are shifting week to week, especially this time of year as we're sort of ramping up into the season. Um, and what's been a really cool evolution lately and where I'm not even fully in tune is our management team is is so badass that they are starting to bring in people without me even being aware of it. Like I'm getting email intro to an employee and I'm like, Hey, we just hired somebody. That's awesome. Uh, the, <laughs> Put this and, guy on the website real quick. Who's this? <laughs> um, so, so I mean that, that's like a really, really cool development in the, the sort of history of the company. It's, there's also sort of a, a, a sad side to that. And I'm like, well, man, I don't, I don't get, I don't know everybody really well anymore. Mm. Um, and so that, that's something like I, I want to refocus on going forward. I'm trying to find ways to, to individually get to know the newer people in the company that, um, that, you know, I don't get one-on-one FaceTime with like I, like I've always, I always have, you know, historically. Yeah. That's been a little bit of a challenge for us slightly too, because we, you know, we're over here now and then it's just, you're trying to make sure we get that enough time with each person to kind of, you know, not lose that, you know, relationship is, is a little bit hard. <laughs> seems like you've done a really good job of everyone focusing on Patriot pool as a whole one. And it's not just how, because I even noticed on your website where you as the owner CEO were at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was interesting. Usually, you know, it's going in order of rank, but you know, you were way at the bottom. I just thought it was really cool. And just by talking with you, it sounds like everyone's kind of more, especially when they got hired on, it's like, dude, it's all of us. We're all Patriot pooled. It's not just one person in particular, even though you started it. But I bet that helps because now you've taken yourself away or you have been for a couple of years where you have to do because the back end part of the business has to be done and it's crucial to make that machine run. So, you know, it's cool that there's not really that issue. It's probably more difficult for people that used to have a day to day relationship with you that saw you more often than they do now. But is that usually when people you know, get brought on, it's probably not as big a deal. I mean, you know, that's the goal is to be, you know, a, a brand. The goal is not to be, you know, house pool service, you know, and that, and that was very intentional from the get go. And, and that's, that's only developed further based on the people we brought onto the team that just can run with the Patriot banner. Um, and so, so I mean, there's definitely intentionality to that. Like that's, um, you know, I, I want, it, it used to drive me crazy as we would start to develop an online review presence when people would like name me by name in the review. I'm like, ah, oh, just put Patriot. Like, like mm-hmm. l- let's keep, let's keep Hal out of it. Cause I don't want people to call Hal. I want people to call Patriot. Yeah. Um, cause you know, that way it'll, it'll help as we grow and, and make it an easier transition for, for customers, you know, that, that it, it's not they're not calling an individual they're calling they're calling a, a company that has its own identity and its own values and its own you know way of being do a lot of people not understand how big you guys actually are now uh i don't know that's it's hit or miss i mean occasionally i'll have i'll, I'll run into somebody and be talking i'm like what do you do i'm like oh, i'm a pool guy and like well you know oh well, what do you, you know how do you ever tell me about your company and like oh you know we've got you know we clean swimming pools or repair swimming pools and like well how many how many swimming pools do you clean? Like, oh, I don't know. We're probably in 750 backyards a week with our repair, you know, department. They're like, Oh crap. Like how many trucks is that? And, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and so like, I start doing the math, like, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it starts to blow their mind. 
Would you feel comfortable? You don't. We don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Just kind of your guys' pricing on like pool service because I think I think it's kind of a crazy how we talked about in Florida they're charging like eighty bucks and that's like difficult right. to get eighty bucks like as far as quality of service. Yeah, yeah. Are uh, you comfortable with that or? I, I, I'm not, I'm not opposed to it because um, because what especially it, it, the ZPPN thing. What I think struck me is that like in the end like the same amounts coming to the bottom line no matter what it is we're charging at the retail value like. Like we're all, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, we're very candidly, we could probably have about a 13% profit margin at the end of the day. Um, and yeah. when you, when you say that in the, in the text thread, I don't understand, I guess, how, how you get to that number. I mean, I know you guys have all your own trucks and that's a big part of it because you supply the trucks and I, we don't. So right. I mean, that, that definitely, well, we have a couple, but not well, like you guys have. A, a lot of it's our growth too. Like yeah. growth just sucks up cash right i mean you know four years ago there were three of us now yeah. we've added 27 trucks in the last four years like yeah. that's not cheap um you know we've uh we bought our current office and we're in the process we just bought another office that we're going to be selling this current one there's you know we we do health insurance for the, there's there's a lot of and just the the cost of you know one thing that's very different i think about our market than most is how spread out our pools are right okay. so we we have pools on route that are over an hour from where our office is and, and we've got pools on the other side of our office going the other way too. Oh, wow. Um, so we cover a very large territory because we're not a dense pool market, right? You know, it's, okay. I think, I think we have like 80,000 pools in all of Austin, which is probably, we could, I don't know, 45 mile radius that we're, we're covering. So, you know, it's, it's not dense. And so. Okay. I guess I can see the difference there a little bit. I think what you, you know, you have like a different type of, plan than most people do you know and by providing those trucks and you choose to use the money put the money back into the business where i don't think a lot of people do that Not, i mean we, we do a lot of it but you know we use towards different things but mostly the people um we, we but, definitely i mean we are in a all-in reinvestment yeah phase oh, yeah because yeah. because i want to just grow i mean i, I want to grow the hell out of this thing i yeah. want to do something nobody's ever done in austin and 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 beyond possibly like i want to I, I, I see where we can be and I want to do what it takes to get there. Yeah. So what do you think? I mean that, so that 13% you're making you compared to what us and other people are doing is you think that's still, I mean, cause to me, if you're making two twenty a pool, man, like that, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's what we're charging. Obviously that's not where we're making and we, well, no, and no, we I, do. I understand. And, that. and so, and we, we actually do a, uh, in fact, we're due for doing, we just talked in our leadership meeting last week that we need to do this again for our new crop of, of people on the team. We do a, uh, a PowerPoint presentation about what it costs, what it costs us to clean a pool. And we break down the P and L to the micro level of a single pool cleaning. Um, and we present it category by category to everybody on staff because, you know, I think every company owner has, in, has encountered where, you know, somebody on the staff will come up and be like, I know exactly what you're making. Like, I know, I see what I'm buying. I know what we charge and, and they don't fully grasp all that goes into it. Sure. Um, and so that's where it's sort of mind blowing where we'll break it down where, you know, you go out and clean a pool and the total sale for the labor, all the chemicals, cause we do chem plus chems and parts, right? Those aren't included in our, in, in our, in our pricing, you know, an average sale might be $52 per, per weekly cleaning. In the end, we're only profiting like $4 on the labor and we're probably profiting $5 on the chemicals and, and, and goods. And so it's mind blowing to, to some of the technicians when they see like, wait, on average, I'm probably getting paid 12 to $15 to clean that pool. And the company's actually only making 10. And that's only if I put chemicals in the pool. Like if I don't make the trip back to the truck and add the stuff that, the, that it actually needs, you know, then they're making, the company's making $4. And, and then we break it down too to be like, you know, if, if, if you forget to put that Polaris bag on, on the, the invoice, you know, you just wasted two weeks of your life that nobody's getting, you know, compensated for like that just is money that disappeared or if we have to give away a month of service. Like you just wasted a week of your life. Or if you just broke your iPad, two weeks of your life was for nothing. You know, there's, there's no, no income generated that can be reinvested and allow us to do some of the cool stuff we like to do. And, uh, you know, invest in some of the technology we're investing in and the real estate to have, have an awesome office work in, in the process of renovating, you know, putting it, putting it in real numbers changes the game to, to the technician uh, as far as perspective goes, for sure. Wow. That's pretty cool. And I, you know, we, we actually talked about this morning in our team meeting about being able to break it down. Cause I don't think, you know, for us as owners, we, we want to know 
how much, you know, per tab costs us and how much per gallon of liquid or, you know, acid costs us and, and like per how much the technician is per visit. And we haven't, we don't have that data yet, to be honest. I mean, we've it took we just me. now slowed down to where we're like, okay, we got to, well, slow down as a quotations. It's, it's like, okay, well, we can assess a little bit of where we're at in the business and figure out how to break that down in those perspectives. You know, that's pretty cool that you have done that and, you know, can share that with your tech. It only took me like 10 years. Uh, <laughs> last year's data is the first really good full year of data I have. Uh, and so now we're, you know, being able to track year over year. And is that being able to kind of forecast to, for your growth and stuff like that? Uh, to a degree. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm still not, I, I'm not, I'm not a great, I'm not great at looking forward. I, I I've historically been a reactive uh, owner and leader in terms of like putting out fires and things. This is the first year I've started to realize like, wait, I can turn my head and look forward and, and, and plan more accurately. Um, and a lot of that's cause I didn't have the data to do it with. Um, yeah. and, and I still feel like even with only one solid year of really good financial data and, and building a second year, I still don't, I still like there's not enough for a trend. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, and so I'm looking forward to the next several years of being what able I, to compare and contrast those numbers. Exactly. Yeah. Um, with that, then like, so how, how do you, how do you track that data from coming in from the field through your, yeah. So in quick book, technology in, in quick, and uh, a lot of, no, just quick books. Um, so straight up. So as we, as we enter invoices, we put the, the technician and, and we use the class function on QuickBooks. So we have divisions, like if it's a cleaning invoice, it's in the cleaning class. We or we created a cleaning class. We created a repair class. Uh, and so that way every invoice is put into its own, um, you know, class. And mm-hmm. then we do the same thing on purchase orders, right? So if it's a cleaner buys it, it's going on, on in the cleaning class and, and same for repair. And so that way from a, a gross profit standpoint, it's already just boom on your report. It's done. You've got all your cost of goods divided up by class compared to your revenue by class. Uh, then on the expenses, what we'll do is if it's a, if it's a, an expense specific to a department, we'll break it out. So like on our fleet, you know, all the trucks and GPS and things like that that go to the cleaning department, we stick straight up there. Uh, if it's a shared expense, we do a revenue split. Like, so if it's, you know, tip historically, we're like 60% cleaning, 40% repair. So if it's say rent for the office, 60% of it's going to go on the cleaning books and 40% is going to go on the repair books. Okay. So you, are you itemizing then pretty much everything? Every single, every single thing that hits our P and L I classify specifically. So it never goes under like a, like a labor. It's just, it's always like pieced out, like, you know, O-ring here, O-ring like. Well, so, so that, no, I don't get that okay. specific. It'll be, you know, Jandy parts versus Jandy whole goods, Pentair parts versus Pentair whole goods. Okay. Um, and so we'll, 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 you know, we've got some broader categories there. Yeah. Sure. That's cool. Um, can you, I mean, so your average market for your, let's just say, you, we won't have to talk about you specifically, but just the average pool in the Austin market, what do you think the average is as far as Probably pool? a couple hundred bucks a month yeah. for a weekly cleaning. I mean, that's the like decent companies. I mean, or yeah. that's like, that's, that's a decent company. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's guys out there doing it for half that, that are in business for two weeks and they, then they realize, Oh shit, I have to drive 40 miles to my next pool and they, they're, they're not sustainable. See, that's a big, that is a big <laughs> difference. I, I don't really, I guess put those two, two and two together. I don't, I don't know your market obviously. So that's, I mean, that makes a big difference if you're driving 40 miles, you know, between pools. Is that like, do people do that on an average? When you're road? starting. Yeah. When you're start like when, when I started Patriot and it was just me, one guy cleaning pools, I had pools in Round Rock, Texas, and then pools south of Austin where I was in the same day. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was in the window time, windshield time, like door to door was four times what it would take to clean the pool. Um, wow. so yeah, that's especially early on when you're just taking whatever comes in the door cause you just need, you need business. makes a lot more sense now <laughs> why you guys charge that much. <laughs> <laughs> What's the average size pool out there? Gallon wise? Uh, probably 18 to 20,000. 18 and 20,000. Yeah. A lot of dive style pools or mostly play? Uh, mix. mix. It depends on the age. The older pools are more dive style. Newer ones aren't, it's not as common. Do you guys have mostly suction side cleaners or pressure side cleaners? 100% pressure side. Really? Um, I was laughing with Chad out at the pool today that I went to go look at. I was like, what's that? Like joking around like as if I'd never seen a suction side cleaner because I think I've probably seen less than five in 12 years in business. Really? Um, Because it just wouldn't make – I mean the the amount of debris we get, especially seasonally, you're just going to screw stuff up. Trying yeah, to pull that, that stuff in. That's because you're trying. You got got bigger leaves too, right? With your oak trees, so the Polaris is better for that. Absolutely. Of- so yeah, we're you know Polaris like 
any Polaris brush side cleaner and then uh the new robots I've liked a lot. I've never been a robot fan historically, but the new the new Polaris robots have been pretty cool. Yeah, is that a what is that? How do you use that? Uh is that that's a like a plug in yeah, robot? Yeah, yeah. The robotic cleaners. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that the one that Nick showed us? Yeah. I've been super impressed. Uh I ended up uh throwing one on my pool and I've I've been blown away. Now the weaknesses I guess the new one they say you can put on a schedule. The one I've got, you got to go out and still manually turn it on. So it's as, it's only as good as you are remembering to turn it on. But the yeah, have you seen Jan- have you seen Jandy's that that new one? Is that the one that like robot like climbs into its own carriage and stuff? I've, I've Can't you control that, it with your phone? Yeah, I you, think that's the new yeah the newest one. You can do it with your automation. That's kind of cool. We don't have any market for that at all. But <laughs> yeah, and that's why Nick was showing us. I was like, yeah, I don't. We have maybe maybe ten pressure side cleaners out of you know the four hundred or so we have. I think it'd be a really cool, I think it's a good idea for anybody that didn't want a cleaner in their pool and they didn't have an in-floor system or it'd have to be, you know, throwing it in every night, but you'd have to actually do that. Right. I don't think a lot of people would, but it would be cool for us. I mean, if we ever had one, you know, if you're just doing like a service bid or whoever doing a service bid throws it in, they can kind of talk. I've heard of people doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, you have the yeah. time to kind of like go through your other stuff while it's cleaning the pool. Maybe do you guys use um, Riptide Vax and stuff? Uh, almost. So we started with all hammerheads. Okay. Um, we've been moving some to to Power Vax just because some of the some of our neighborhoods we're in have crazy hills, hmm. and so accessibility with the hammerhead is rough. Um, I, I had not heard of Riptide until the ZPPN thing. Oh, really? And we've been thinking about ordering one of those to play with. Um, but yeah. but yeah, we we started with all hammers because like as as i think we not often do as business owners like the way the way you do it is the only way you know it to be done and so that's you, you just you try to multiply that at first and so like i always used a hammerhead so it's like everybody must is probably gonna love hammerheads because i love a hammerhead sure. so went and bought like 10 of them and, <laughs> and then like over time you're like man i can't get that thing in this backyard you expect me to pull it up that driveway like that's straight uphill and so we we started moving around to some different different equipment well, but yeah never even heard of those type of cleaners until we went to um, Orlando to the pool show and they're like, Hey, yeah, this is a cool cleaner. I'm like, we would never use this. I mean, that thing is huge. goes on every truck. I mean, I, the ZPPN really put that in play for us too, about how many people actually use those. And you know, through the chat that we do, you know, I've, I've heard, you know, people making up their own parts for it and like making their own bags. And right. like I was, I, that's very foreign to us. Well, and, and it's not even in Austin, it's not super common. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd say maybe, Half the pool trucks you see have something like that on it. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> but we, don't, again, like, we don't have trees that have that big of debris, I don't think, you know, to make it useful or, or make it a good profitable, you know, buy-in. When the time of year when it's useful, it is the most useful tool you can have. The The downside of it is, is it does tend to make you a lazy pool cleaner. Like everybody that's ever used one will fall prey and be guilty of it at some point or another where you're like, I'm just going to hammerhead it when it's silty and you know, it needs to be line backed. And 30 minutes after you leave all that silt, just just sinking right back down to the bottom. Mm. Um, so it's cause it's such an easy tool to use that it it can, it can make you lazy. Yeah. We've seen those portable vacuums out there. They just marketed the battery operated ones that Mm. only lasted (laughs) like (laughs) two pools, like, yeah, you know, easy cleanup pools. I feel like sort of our, the chain of purpose almost is, you know, our cleaners are there to make life as easy as possible on, on the homeowner. My managers and I, our job is to make life as easy as possible on our, on our techs. And so like any tool we can give them to make their life easier, we, we want to explore and figure out how to do it. For sure. We always talked about the guys, if you have any suggestions or stuff and they don't do enough research, I don't think to know any different because our market's pretty similar everybody kind of does the same thing the same way um but yeah we oh, we're always looking at different things to make it better easier but. what's up guys we hope you're enjoying the episode so far when we get back we will talk about transparency with customers uh, we get into quite a long discussion about yelp reviews and instagram the importance of logos networking and mentoring how discuss is his biggest failure and how that has humbled him how he's grown from that and it's a pretty big one and it's a cool story so stay tuned for that we will discuss the book traction which has been a game changer for both us here at brothers pool service and hal at patriot so you guys should definitely check out that book it's changed everything for us how we'll then discuss colin's hope 
which is a foundation he supports. They do their best to help prevent pool drowning, so it's a serious issue. So please check that out as well. Join in on that cause, and we all should do better as a pool industry together, you know, to support causes like this. So we hope you guys enjoy the episode, and we will jump right back into it after a word from our sponsor. What's going on, everybody? This episode is brought to you by Jobber. Jobber is by far our favorite tool for collecting deposits, payments, scheduling customer jobs, and assigning tasks to a specific person on our team. If you're looking for a better way to stay organized, this is it. I don't even know how we did things before Jobber. If you have any questions, their customer service team is out of this world. Jobber is so cool that they are hooking up all of our listeners with a free 14-day trial. Just visit getjobber.com backslash pool chasers. That's getjobber.com backslash pool chasers. Try it out. We promise you won't be disappointed. You know, jump back into your team with such a large team, you know, and someone calls out or someone's sick or needs to take time off. How do you guys kind of deal with that? Uh, it's easier now than it used to be. Uh, there were there were a lot of years where it just wasn't really an option. Uh, <laughs> and that, I mean, that, that was, it's a shitty way to run it. But like, there wasn't, there wasn't an option because like, you know, it was just, we didn't have a culture built out to accommodate that. Um, so I'm curious, what does that mean exactly? Yeah, but it still happened, right? <laughs> does that mean like if you don't come in, there, you I mean, probably you might not have a place to work? No, for, I mean, fortunately, that when we were a smaller team, uh, that you know people, you know, had enjoyed what they were doing. They and they they didn't push for time off, and I wasn't gonna just willingly give it um, because I I didn't have the option. I was already working six seven days a week, and I was gonna be the void filler. There, I didn't have the ability to fill voids. Um, mm. And so, so there were, you know, lots of struggle it, that, that is one of the toughest things I feel like as you're going from a one person operation to a small to midsize operation, like that's, mm-hmm. that is a huge challenge that it, a lot of it's luck. Like luckily I didn't have people get really sick or injured or, you know, want to have big family vacations they couldn't avoid or something. So I feel like we sort of skated through that. Um, very, very lucky. Um, and it's pretty lucky because you didn't, I mean, you, you said you kept your first guy for like a year, right? Or something. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty rare. Yeah. Well, and the second guy was there for three years and, yeah. and like, you know, we had some longevity, um, but people luckily in the early days, there was lots of, lots of team play. People were team <laughs> players. Um, <laughs> yeah. Got to cover it, cover up pools and cover things like that. So was that part of the interview? But like, are you expected to go the distance <laughs> with Patriot pools? <laughs> there's some shit that's going to go down. So, yeah. so what's been really good though, is, is, as we've matured as a company, like we've been able to, to change the way we do it and, and, and now more easily accommodate it. So, you know, now, and, and this is crazy. We, we did this calculation. We were talking with our management team the other day, like how many, sick and vacation days do we have we realized 20 as of january we're gonna have 240 vacation pay time off days to cover in 2019 oh wow um because what we do is after six months you get three days after a year you get a week and two sick days after two years you get two weeks and three sick days um and yeah, as i said we've been really fortunate with our our you know lack of turnover and our retention and so we've got people and been on the team for a long time and they've they're they've well deserved earned earned that time off um, what it's resulted in is we basically will have like essentially a full time cover position uh, of an employee who almost does nothing but vacation coverage, um, and so you know that's that's an added expense mm-hmm. uh, for what we were talking about earlier. But um, but I just feel like that's that's the kind of company I, I want us to be, you know, and 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 people on our team agree, and that's that's what we're going to shoot to do. But it's it's still a challenge. I mean, it's still we very have to thought like we have some blackout dates. Uh, Nobody's taking a vacation the Friday before Memorial Day or Labor Day or, or the week of the 4th of July. Um, you know, you need to give us two weeks because if three people all want vacation at the same time, we can't do that. Like we can do we can space things out and accommodate people. But like we need we need heads up so that we, we can make it happen uh, without being a detriment to the company. Do you service pools for Thanksgiving and Christmas week? We do. Yeah, yeah. Um, we take. Uh, so we've actually just changed this based on feedback from from the team last year. Um it used to be that we had like in our handbook official days off Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, and Christmas. Uh, I can't remember what Labor Day, Memorial yeah. Day, but the you, usually the the swim holidays were still push weeks, right? Yep. You, you'd, you'd get all the pools done, you just did it in a compressed week. And so what we've done is we've moved uh, some of the other holidays to compressed weeks as well because we people want the Friday after Thanksgiving off. So we're going to be like, okay, if if we can handle a, a three day push week and nobody screws up and ruins it for the, for everybody else, like we'll do it. 
but you know, it's going to be a test and everybody's got to show that they can do it without, without having the quality suffer. So you're talking about cleaning all five days and three within days. three days. And every single person in the company is cleaning pools, prepared everybody. Like we're team effort. Let's get all these pools clean in three days. Mm. Um, same thing. Uh, I think we talked about the same thing on, uh, adding new years and, and I don't know, we've shifted it all. It's, it's not all fresh in my mind, but, sure. um, but you know, there was some grumbling last year about the way we had it done. Um, that was delayed a year because I think we had the holidays fell on some goofy days the last couple of years. Um, but it, it came to light this year that no, this is an issue. We got to get this fixed because <laughs> people are not going to be happy with, with the way it currently is. Right. That's cool. Is there no reason why you can't take, do you have any weeks that you take off or anything like that? Uh, it, it maintenance wise. No, we're, we're year round every week of the year. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and it's, you know, we, we take a financial beating in December. I, uh, like December is a bloody month as far as it's the only month where like typically we're going to lose money, but we lose a lot of money in December. Uh, and basically it's, you know, end of year expenses with all the insurance payments that come due, Christmas bonuses. Like there's all these things that, um, like we can't take that week off cause we're already, we're already bloody enough. Right. <laughs> so I know Makes you were sense. talking earlier about not having a service agreement or anything like that. How is it? transparent with your customers like what your hours are what you do what you don't do when you can call when not to call yeah um i don't know that we do an excellent job at that um that's something that that we're we're focusing on over the next year as we try to document things out better because we've been poor at that um historically so you know we're we're working working on a, a company i was hanging out with earlier today here in arizona showed me some stuff that they sent out to their customers that was awesome as far as how they communicate expectations. Um, we don't do that very well right now. Um, and so, you know, if fortunately we haven't had many complaints in that department, but you know, we typically are just putting out fires. You know, we haven't, we don't have that documented the way we should. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's cause you have so much stuff included in your pool service packages. You know what I mean? Cause I right. feel like we have to have a service agreement in place to tell people that we do, you know, DE and cartridge filter cleans every six months. Right. And, you know, all these other things. So if you don't, you know, that's not a huge deal. We, we haven't had much kickback with it. I mean, we, you know, for the most part, I think f fortunately the, the reputation we've built up online, um, people, if they find us, they're inherently going to be fairly trusting because they, they see, you know, the reflection online of the, the, the job we've done for other people. Um, and so I feel like we get some leeway there. Another, another thing that I think is really key that, um, that we started doing early on, and I think it's helped spur our growth is we really put a focus on the individuals in our company and try to create relationships with our customers. And so like, you know, all our customers, most, most of our, our new customers are, I don't know where the last, if the last guy ever came, he just never showed up. He stopped coming. I don't know his name. You know, like, um, we try to put our technicians out front and center where our customers know who they are. They know what they look like. They know, you know, some biographical information. They know what day they're coming. Um, and so there's that relationship factor cause you get, you get so much more forgiveness when, you know, it's Hal that forgot to empty the skimmer basket. Like, Oh, Hal's a person, he's human. He, right. forget, he forgets stuff as opposed to like that guy that's just out to screw me. Like when it's, Oh, that guy, your guy forgot to do this. Um, you know, that then, then you get a lot, you get much less leeway from, from your customers. Do you guys do initial bids or do you just sign people up if they call in we and they accept? Over, we do it over the phone. We don't, we don't go out in person at all. Um, have you always done it that way? We have. Yeah. Um, so send us, send us some pictures, answer some questions we have about the pool. Um, if, if we sense that there might be some, some intricacy or something like difficult about the pool, in that case, we might go look at it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, 90 plus percent of the pools we maintain are pretty much the same thing. And you can usually vet that out with a few questions and some pictures. And so in that case, we can just quote it over the phone. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I still visit all the, you know, new weekly pool service customers. Yeah. I think that probably has to do with how how just big our market is because, you know, we have to, quote, unquote, compete with other companies. And I don't know if I mean, you guys have less, bigger, bigger, you know, not so many pools. And I don't know. It's more difficult to kind of tell them what the difference is between us and, you know, the 400 other companies, you know, I don't know how many companies you guys have in Austin, but you know, it's, I'd say we probably have a couple hundred. Yeah. It's, I mean, we have, I would say thousands. I don't, 
even know. <laughs> I see new pool companies every single day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we definitely have new one pullers every day, but mm-hmm. three quarters of them don't last six months. Sure. Um, but just, still, thank God for them. I don't even know what the hell we do <laughs> if there wasn't so many pool companies because, I mean, yeah. you know how it is. You still, the phone blows up, the emails, the website, right. and there's thousands of pool companies out here, and they're still, because we're not the only one. We might be, you know, number one on Yelp and organic rank, but we're not the only ones with phones blowing up. Every, you know, probably everybody on the first page is just getting lit up all day right. long. So, yeah, you know, we definitely need everybody to be on board and do things correctly. Well, and that's the key, doing it correctly and doing it professionally and then deciding to charge a justifiable price for it. Because I feel like the, the weakness that, that all the influx of new companies that aren't sustainable and don't make it is they set bad expectations for customers in terms of one, the quality of service, but two, because of their lack of like research and, and, and or market research and, and knowledge of what price mm-hmm. pricing should be, what yeah. accurate pricing and justifiable pricing should be, they'll come in and they'll, you know, if they quit their job where they were cleaning pools for somebody else and they say, oh, well, I know what he was making because I know what I'm getting paid and I'm going to charge 15% more than that. And that's obviously an unsustainable model. Um, it, then it sets that price in a consumer side where they think that's a, a reasonable price for the service and it's not. It's not a sustainable price. Like we'll get that all the time where customers will say, well, how can you charge that? They're like, well, we're only we're only pulling about 13% down to the bottom line. Like, does that seem unreasonable? Like, you know, to for a sustainable business and like, Oh no, that's not. And I'm surprised you told me how much money you're making. Um, <laughs> and you know, this, you can disarm them with being candid, but also it, it's, it's educating them because they, a lot of times people think we're trying to screw them when we're not, we're just, we're trying to make a living. I think that's, yeah. The educating part is, is why we still do it in person. I think because it's, we do, we do charge more than a lot of the other companies. There's a few that charge more than us, but for the most part, like you said, we're a premium service. So, but it's it's much more easy to tell them in person why you're, what you're getting for that price than it is through over the phone or through an email. I think it still blows me away that they just fired their pool company that they're paying eighty dollars a month, and I'm there, and they're like, "You're too much money." You know, I was paying this much. I'm like, "Did did you really just say that?" <laughs> right. Did you hear what, what the hell you am said? I doing here? Right. <laughs> one, one, one of my favorite like favorite things that's that's sort of twisted is when people are like oh we just you're just so expensive we're gonna go we found this guy who can do it for this price and we're like okay what are the chances we see this person back and two or three months later they're like we're so sorry that's the best part we get it now like your price isn't unfair and they, i love when they come crawling back yeah <laughs> yeah that's the best man <laughs> it is like, what it is man you get what you best. pay for <laughs> And the best is being able to tell them no when they come crawling back. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> Done that. Ooh, sorry. Unfortunately, we are not taking on new customers at this time. Right. <laughs> Hold on. I got another call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're taking on. Oh, sorry, that's you're still on. <laughs> I've, I've got some buddies in Austin that are brutal with it. And they'll they'll automatically, it's a 10% price bump every time yep. if somebody does that. Like, mm-hmm. and, and they've had some people that have gotten multiple bumps because they just won't learn their lesson. I've had a couple men that, that have done that. We've come back to us and we're just like, no, now it's now it's one thirty, man. Like, <laughs> like, Dude, you, just, like, you hop on your CRM. Let me get your first and last name. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. You called here three months ago. Yeah. We quoted you this. Okay, yeah. So let me just do some yeah. quick math. So let's throw that $80 you're yeah. paying into on top of our price. There we go. <laughs> yeah, That's I think one thing fun. we've we've struggled with um, recently is finding repair technicians or finding somebody that actually can do it a decent way. Do you, right. Have you had a issue at all finding people with experience or have you trained any of your techs to move into repairs? So finding people with experience is really tough because I mean, let's be honest, not many people grow up thinking I want to be a pool guy. Right. So right. it's not like we have a, a huge feeder for talent. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so yeah, I mean really the options are poach somebody ex- very expensively from another company, um, or groom them in house. And, uh, and, and we've, We've done both. Um, we've got uh, a couple people who we had poached from other other companies, and and now we've got now we're only focusing on in-house development. Like that's that's how we want to focus on every position of our company. Is we want to create a career path so people can see like what their path of progression is. Um, and so we've got two two current repair techs that we've trained in-house, and they're freaking killing it. Um, I mean, they've learned they've they've learned in a, so. Cameron, one of our guys, has been doing it for two years now. 
dude knows more than probably most pro techs have been doing it for 10 years and he's skilled. I mean, he, he can just kill it. And we've got, uh, another guy, Paul has been doing it for about a year. He's just, he's, he's, he was an instructor last year at the Southwest Point Spa show. That's how quickly he's learning. Wow. Um, We've so what, so what is it about right them now. that they, they were able to pick the step up so so fast? Do they have like a mechanical background or plumbing background? Is there something specific? I, I mean, they're just sharp dudes and they want and they're hungry. They want to learn. Um, and, and that's 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 that goes to sort of on the value side where we're looking for people with passion. Right. You know, if somebody if somebody's obviously not digging what they're doing, like we don't want them there. Like if you can do the job, but you're not really liking it like. You can go do that somewhere else. We want people that are really into it. Right. And so we've been, you know, these, uh, the, the guys we're grooming up right now, including one we have in training right now. I mean, they're just, they're hungry. They want, they want to learn. They want to, they want a career path. And, you know, they're, they're, they're not afraid to, to, to put that out there and, and go for it. I don't know if we already talked about this, but are usually finding these people on Indeed or Craigslist or um, Facebook? I, so it's historically like, I think right now about 50% of our team or more is employee referral. Um, cause I, I very much think, you know, a players hang out with a players. Um, and so when we find somebody good, we want to know who are your friends and do they want to come join the pool business? Um, we do a, a referral bonus, referral bonus. So if you bring on somebody two months after they've gone solo and are actually making the, the company money, you get 500 bucks and in 12 months of both of you're still there, you get another $500. Um, and so, We've gotten a lot of employee referrals. We've struck gold on Craigslist uh, several times. Um, we've also, of course, <laughs> had, some, had, had some turds come out of Craigslist. But, yeah. um, and then um, lately what's been cool is we've had some people that have just seen us around town and have been, you know, heard good things. And they've been sort of attracted to the way we're trying to do it. And they've just sought us out and been like, hey, you know, are you hiring? Can we talk about what y'all are doing at Patriot? That's really cool. And, it, man – feels like it's never convenient. We have somebody that just um, contacted us and it, they seem like a good fit, but it's like not perfect timing to hire somebody. Do you find yourself getting into that situation where it's like, man, you sound like you'd be really good on the team. This is probably, you know, years ago. That well, like, this like, would happen. like I said, when we hired our two guys in 2014, that was totally it. It was like, I don't think we can do it. Well, shit, let's do it and see what happens. Um, now we're at a point where we basically are always hiring. So if we find somebody good, we're going to hire them no matter what. Like, mm -hmm. you know, cause there's always something to do, right? Yeah. Cause we're, 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 you know, we have enough people in the field and there's enough work going on and, 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 you know, just by due to the nature of our size, we have enough people that, that do turn over, um, that if, if we see potential, do you want a job? Yeah. Going after <laughs> it. Uh, especially a company as big as yours, you never know when somebody's going to fall off or whatever's going to happen. You know, they want to go do something else or they're moving or whatever the case may be. You need somebody else to kind of you know, step up and maybe move into that role or, and you're still always vulnerable. Like we had in August, I think it was last August. We were about to do a geographic split of the city, North and South into two separate divisions. We had three guys in one week leave. Oh, we wow. had one guy that we fired, one guy that we knew was leaving. He'd given advance notice. And one guy that had a life, serious life issue come up that he was just like, Hey, I, I'm sorry, but I got to go. Um, and so all of a sudden, you know, shit hit the fan where we're three guys down. And even, even at a company of, you know, 20 something people, you lose three at once. Like, that puts the hurt on. For sure. Um, and so, so that's always a possibility too. We're having, having extra people, you know, we, we definitely, we carry a very, I'd say bloated payroll. Like we, we staff more people than we need to, to get the job done, but I'd rather do that um, and have a little less fall to the bottom line than, you yeah. know, constantly, you know, anxious. Right. So how do you train in-house guys in and bring them from servicing pools into repairing? Uh, ride alongs. I mean, basically they're just as, as full time as we can put them as, as long as it takes to learn. Um, so, you know, we've got, so, I'd say at least a few months, um, you pull them completely off of pools and yeah. just ride along with the, that's, with the repair that, that's what we've done in the past. So right now we have a new position we've developed, which is like a flex position. And so, uh, we have, we, we know who our next repair tech and training is, but he's not full time repair tech and training yet. So like right now he's doing a bunch of turnarounds and filter cleans and stuff, but uh, before the season really heated up, he was doing ride alongs, but we're stretching him out further. Cause we have so many vacation days to cover. Like I, like I told you that, you know, we have to have these flex positions available. Yeah. Um, and so we've got one on each on the North team and the South team. Mm. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's basically just osmosis. That's cool. So you just, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a big hit for you as an owner to take I for mean, sure. having two people out doing the same repairs. Yeah. 
Well, I shouldn't say a hit. I mean, it's more of an investment, I guess. It's, it's, it's absolutely an investment. I mean, there's always risk associated with it that you could invest all that and people leave. Um, but it's, yeah, you got to look at it as an investment for sure. But it's, but yeah, it's, it's, it's costly. I know that we've talked about in the text thread a little bit, how you guys have quite a bit of scripting or templates, um, throughout that you've created similar to how we do. And I think I was kind of surprised at the response to that, I guess, coming from the corporate world, which I did, I kind of understood like templates save you time, you know, and having that. So we have, I mean, like I said, 30 to 50, I don't know off the top of my head, but template emails that are like we've given to our repair, I mean, our service manager and now our office admin and what we use. I mean, Greg has one for Yelp or several for Yelp, right. um, you know, that we've created. So how, how come that seems more you know important to you as well? I mean, what has it, is just a time thing? It, it, it's a couple of different things. So it started as a voice thing of like, this is the way I want Patriot to present itself. Here's exactly how I want that presentation to go. Um, it's evolved into a time thing as we've gotten bigger and just things are nuts. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it doesn't make sense to, to keep trying to reinvent the wheel. Like if you've got something that works and, and you know, it works, just put it on paper and copy and paste it. Right. But yeah. it's also like the best counter you could possibly <laughs> mm-hmm. have. If you put time into, you know, I have five solid templates that I have and it's just five different like counters for, um, an inquiry or something. Those are the best answers I could possibly have. So why am I going to try and rewrite exactly well, an email that's just, you know, because depending on the situation, we're all busy here. I'm not going to waste anybody's time. And yeah, there's a little manipulating in the email because they might have, you know, some real kind of odd direct questions or something. But right. put their name on it, answer whatever questions, give them a good referral, explain the situation that, you know, you've had, you know, too many calls, too many this, too many that. You know, the technicians are maxed out. Whatever the situation is, people love honesty. And it's not like they're emailing you every single day. They're going to be like, oh, you sent me that email yesterday. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're probably getting to the point where somebody might <laughs> might have got it twice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, what's so funny is, is like, well, one, if you can refine the message over time, too, you can just absolutely perfect it. Right? Oh, yeah. And so, you know, like, for example, we have a, a, a copy and paste email template for if somebody says, hey, if I buy this on Amazon or you know, will you install this thing I already have? Cause like we won't, t- if it doesn't come from us, we're not going to touch it. And, and so we have a very, you know, that's been refined over the course of a year, like perfect response for why we're not going to do it, why we don't think it's a good idea, you know, and, and, and it goes, it answers any question anybody's over, you know, cause you will, will field more and more questions over a year where then you can just even more perfectly yeah. tailor it. And, uh, what's funny though, is like the customer response too. like, we had, a uh, Quincy, our, our route manager sent, one of these responses out to somebody like lightning quick. Like as soon as it came in, he, he just copy and pasted this like four paragraph perfect <laughs> response. And, and this guy, you know, responded back immediately. He's like, that is the most thoughtful. Like, I, he's like, I can't believe you took the time to, to answer my question that in depth. Like because <laughs> he's like, because of that alone, like I'm going to come do business with you. Or like, we're like, that's amazing. Oh, dude, that like, is so funny. <laughs> Yep, you're welcome. <laughs> like, like, like Qu- Quincy's on the ball. He came up with like oh, the perfect four paragraph oh. response in four minutes. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's like, man, you must be an excellent typer. <laughs> said, Damn boy, <laughs> get you a five star review. Uh, Look what this guy wrote me. He got my first name wrong, but <laughs> dude, that's so funny. I think what you said, you know, you touch point or uh, you touched on a little bit was that it gets you your voice out right as the owner i mean that's kind of how it started with with us as well i started i just wrote a bunch of them that i thought you know when i was finally handing over we call them pool issues that's when when they report in the field but i handed over pool issues to somebody else and i was like well these like 30 are pretty much the same thing you know these o-rings are 10 bucks these are 15 bucks i mean you your response can clearly easily be the same thing every time right. and that was you know worded the way i wanted it to be worded and then that was the first thing. But yeah, now it's definitely a time thing too. Just like, kinda, right. come on, you got to get through those and you know, with Yelp for sure, trying to deal with those messages. Well, and what's cool is watching them evolve over time. Like even once my hands are off of them, like we've got some of the scripts that are, you know, four years old that, that I haven't touched personally in a couple of years. And, I, and I'm seeing like a revision come across. I'm like, that's so much better than it was two years ago. Like, <laughs> who edited that piece? Like, where'd that come from? Like, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool that that's awesome. they're taking initiative to change some of that stuff up. Um, so we were talking how that, you know, we use Yelp and it's been a big part of Brothers Pool Service success. 
and you kind of had the same, you know, thing going on over there at Patriot Pool. Want to talk to us about what Yelp has done for you guys? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, I'd say it's probably the primary snowball for, for the growth of our business starting in 2014 when we started growing. Um, just organically, we had a couple Yelp reviews pop up and Yelpers find Yelp and write Yelp reviews. And so it just sort of snowballed into more reviews and more reviews and more reviews where we've you know been able to be the leader so far in our market in that. And I mean, at least in Austin, it's a very tech, tech centric city. And, um, you know, if you Google anything Austin pool related, Yelp's category is the first thing. And, you know, companies that are up at the top, you know, cause I know we're not the only one that gets the volume of phone calls we do from Yelp. Uh, it's been a huge, huge factor in our growth. Nice. And I know we were talking that you guys had just recently turned your messages off. Yeah. Well, the messages have probably been off for about a year. For about um, a year now. Yeah. Just because, I mean, I got tired of getting pinged at midnight and being judged on how quickly I was going to respond. Um, you know, if someone, if someone sees who we are, our reputation, how we do business, you know, and, and, and they, they want to engage us, they, they can call or email or use the countless other ways to contact us. Um, you know, that's just one specific venue we've turned off because, because we couldn't control it. So do you guys do anything specific to actually get reviews and not that you're soliciting reviews, but you know, you're doing anything like when you get done with a job, you have it in your signature, you just say, Hey, we'd really love to hear some feedback, regardless if it's good or bad. Is there anything in particular that, you know, you guys do? Cause we talk about, you know, doing good work and this and that, but I don't really think that that's enough. I think you have to go the extra mile right. and say, you know, how was your experience with us? Oh, it was great. Well, we'd love to, you know, hear your thoughts on Yelp or Google or whatever. So, so that's evolved over time. Um, dating back to like when we were really starting to build a presence on Yelp, we, it wasn't anything more than like if a customer just couldn't, was just gushing over us. So it was like, well, Hey, if you ever find time, if you could put that anywhere online, right? Like, you know, those thoughts would be gold to us in terms of, you know, how much social media can multiply your voice and, and referral. Um, you, of course you say that and everybody immediately is like, Oh, absolutely. We'll do it. And you know, 2% of them will actually take time to <laughs> yeah. put anything online. Um, and so, so a lot of it was like, you know, a struggle initially, like how do we get these? And, and we got lucky with just Yelpers finding us and then doing business with us and, and yelping more and more. But, um, lately we, we have started using some of the services, uh, we use broadly right now, but the, the most valuable piece isn't the reviews. It's the internal feedback because it's a one survey mm -hmm. question or a, a one question survey that gets sent out. And if you're talking about from broadly, right? From broadly. Yeah. If somebody hates you, like it's in it and you make it as easy as one click for them to tell you they hate you. That's, that's the valuable information. Cause that's where you're actually getting better mm -hmm. as a company oh, yeah. and figuring out like, okay, and shit, it's not broadcast this online. Fixed. That's the yeah. best part about broadly. Yeah. I don't know if you do you you know we we use broadly from okay, the very didn't, beginning. You I didn't know that. I was going to say, did we already talk about? We have this? not. No, I missed that. this. We we just we we just started using them. Uh, I think in January. Yeah. After the Southwest Pool and Spa show, we hit their booth and so ah, that sounds cool. Let's let's try that. The negative feedback is is the gold, and it it's, and it sucks because you're like, oh, people hate us, but that's interesting. And that's how we. I mean, when since we were just us two and one guy in the small office, like broadly was one of the very first investments we made. And we got, that's how our Yelp got kicked off pretty well. You know, it was like seven or eight, like right away, which right. helped a lot. I mean, I, I got a, and, I have a buddy in Austin who he's gotten great reviews from it. Um, yeah. cause he was the one that was like, yeah, you should, you should look at it. And so that's so why I signed up. So like, I don't know, maybe it's just different experiences with different, different folks, but you probably think, also really good. And <laughs> maybe your guys that are Yelpers have already done it for you. Right. You I, I'm, I'm wondering, I think we might've yeah, cashed out our, <laughs> our existing reviewers. <laughs> Well, I think it's different too, not to talk bad about your company, but I think we're a, a lot more likely to get reviews because the owners are doing the initial bids. Like we're that small still right. to where we started at a good time and we we're aggressive with getting feedback in the beginning that when we're doing the initial bids and we're educating them on their pooling equipment and we're sincere and we're like, you know, if this isn't, if we're not a good fit, we'll send you over here. There's so many things that like we do personally that I think we're setting ourselves up for getting that feedback. I think that's exactly it because, yeah. because the time when we were really cranking out reviews was when I was still interacting with every single customer over the phone and, and being the face. And that's where, like I said, I hated the fact that they would name me individually in reviews and not just say Patriot. Cause I wanted it to be Patriot mm -hmm. that was getting, you know, the recognition. Um, I think that's it. Cause it, it, you know, that level of interaction 
where they know it's your baby and, you know, they want to help help you individually. Um, I think that's the most fruitful time for reviews. Yeah, I mean, even even the last year or so, we haven't gotten the amount of reviews like we were getting because it's yeah. just our hands are off it more. We're not in that backyard every day. Right. We, weren't, we haven't serviced pools in a while. Um, but, you know, you have to remind them because every time mm-hmm. we remind them, we've been doing pretty good mm-hmm. because when you don't do that, that's why I love, you know, Sophie was in here. It was all really good and that's awesome information. But you you have to do more than put it in your email signature and a little bit of this. You really have to remind them. That's with the phone call. That's with, you know, an email. Like, we really appreciate your business. You know, explain to them that the the feedback that we get is how we get customers and that's how we feed our families and that's how our team does this you're not sure. soliciting you already said that you had a great experience i was professional my repair guy was professional we showed up on time you said all that copy that shit and put it in <laughs> yelp you know what i mean like take a couple seconds and please go review some other people right. first before you do mine because i need some recommend- <laughs> actually need some recommended reviews get a profile picture too right i'll yeah. visit your house and take a picture of you next to the pool well you know, on that on that personal like that personal note touch too from the owner like uh one thing that's worked really well for us is every christmas i'll send our like dinbar fam personal family christmas card to all the customers and uh and we'll get a spike after christmas oh, once, once they see pictures of my kids and everything like that it's uh that it makes an impact oh that's really cool you send a family picture yeah send, like send, your family send to like, all your customers like the, like the personal christmas card i send to like family and friends i send that to the customers too and, and at this point we have to cut it off where it's like okay if you're, it used to be like, it used to be like every customer. Then it was yeah. like, okay, customers we've done business with in the last 12 months. And I was like, okay, now we're out customers. Like, you know, we've had to pare it down because the freaking postage, I mean, we'll spend five grand on a Christmas card or something. Yeah. Send out a um, mass but, email, like who's gotten a Christmas card? <laughs> <laughs> so those of you that haven't, I'm sending you one. But, but we get a, we get a, a spike out of it. So, I mean, it, it's, it's worth it. It's, it's sort of, it's advertising. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, how many reviews are you guys at right now? Uh, on Yelp, we're floating around 80 public reviews, and then there's the the hidden ones, too. Congratulations, man. We understand how hard it is to, to get to that and do it the honest way. I hear about people saying, like, oh, that company, they bought these reviews. Oh, they'll and pay this for and them and stuff, yeah. I swear to God, I've done some major research, and I'm pretty good at research. I don't know how you can make that happen. You know what I mean? Well, I'm pretty sure Yelp will come shut you down if if they find you're paying for reviews and stuff too. Like they're not, they're, oh yeah, they're not cool with that. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. They're That's not. why we don't understand because we we're educated on it. You know, he, Greg more than I, but like you. That doesn't. That's not something that you can just do. You can't just go and pay for reviews. I, at least as far as we know. I, and that algorithm is built for that kind yeah. of stuff. It's built to sniff out the things that aren't legit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, and then if they kill your presence, I mean, that's so many tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars of lost potential revenue. Like, better, yeah, better yeah. to do it the uh, the slow and steady the slow, way. Slow, honest way. <laughs> <laughs> that's why these these big uh, – these people are starting to build up momentum like on Instagram. They get – they build up momentum and then they go buy 100,000 followers and spread out, you know, a million likes throughout the last, you know, 20 photos. And they had something real and then they get shut down because it's totally illegal – Right. According mm-hmm. to like Instagram code, laws, yeah. you know what I mean. So it's like, dude, what the? F- yeah, like why? You can't be fronting that hard, right? You got to take your time and do it the the right way, the way that we're you know all doing it. What shifted in 2014 for you? Because you know you were doing it word of mouth, right, for a long time. Right. What what brought that you know to your vision or? So it was, I think it was it was twofold. It was the rebrand and website, and then it was the hiring of two ace people. Um, Cause, cause I really feel like, like I actually have a blog post about this on our website about, um, I feel like the sort of the rocket fuel to our company has been our people. Um, you know, it was just me for five years floundering, not figuring out how to get it, get it bigger than that. And as soon as we added a couple of people to the team, it just took off. Um, you know, I think it was finding people that, that, you know, really sort of reflected who, who we wanted to be as a company and then letting them roll with it, that, yep. you know. And were you nervous or scared before that to engage oh, yeah. online? I mean, what was oh, engage online? I thought you were going with well, employees because I feel that, like that too. Because <laughs> because that's I think the biggest like self limiter mm-hmm. to most most one man pool companies is mm-hmm. they can't they can't get past that first employee and and that was a big struggle for me for sure. Yeah, um, it was a, that was the most miserable hardest time of being in business was hiring the first person, uh, and finally my wife was just like 
you're being an asshole. Like get, th- get this figured out. If you want to grow, you got to figure out how to grow and not be an asshole. Like, yeah. um, and like, you know, giving up that, that sort of oh, micromanagement. management. That's your baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely difficult. But I mean, as far as the online presence, were you, were you scared to go that route or the, the rebranding? Did they talk to you about that? No, it, it, just, it just seemed natural. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it, that was just sort of the evolution that, that, that fit. <laughs> that was probably one of the main reasons why you were rebranding too, is because, Social media is becoming a big thing. Having a website is a thing. For sure. And everything is so visual between pools, branding in this day and age that you kind of have to do all that. Well, and especially in our industry where it's like, you know, 90% of the website's the exact same website that looks like it was made in 1998. Mm-hmm. And, and so, like, then when it's like you create a mobile friendly website that looks cool, you know, it's like, this does, this is not the same product. Like, you know, it, it just looks different. Yeah. yeah, our clientele shifted toward, you know, we're we're like their 30s and 40s a lot now. You know, the ones that actually care about that and right. are seeing that and operate like that. Um, you know, did you get much pushback from other companies or you uh, know, or, no, not from other companies. We had a, we had we had one guy specifically on our on our team that was like, "This is crazy. Why are you spending $15,000? You have a logo that works. Like you have a logo. That's all not all that matters." And it was like, "No, it's not. We got to find there's better ways to do this. Um, and, and that was part of the sort of like being in like the Austin brand is that we were trying to shoot for was to, to, because we're a tech city, do the play into that and, mm. and, and look new and fresh and modern. Yeah. You didn't get any like flack from older, old time pool guys. No. You know, nothing like that. No. By looking cool. at it, they're probably like, that looks kick ass. That looks like a little shell logo. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the things on our vision board. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Why why Patriot? Uh so this, this You're a big Patriot sort fan? of no, sort of an embarrassing I story. Hope not. Um, I was say you might have to leave. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Get the, out of here. Now so so back when I didn't know what I wanted to do in college and I thought I was gonna go teaching or start a business. I was also really into politics at that time, which I'm like the antithesis of that now um i I despise anything political but the i I thought i wanted to maybe go into politics in the future and so it was actually a long play of patriot pool and spa start a business do something there transition from that to politics because like when i found when i actually decided to to start the pool industry i was uh interning for one of our u.s senators in texas and like that's that was i don't know it was just part of part of the the long-term vision when I was young and naive and thought politics was selfless service and, uh, you know, pure and good. <laughs> cool. That's a cool story behind it. That's not what I thought it was. It's not where I thought you were going, but then you being like a history major too, I thought there might've been something in there, but it had to do with politics. You guys want to talk politics? Nothing to do with history? N- no, nothing to do with history. It was really? purely, I mean, it was, it's alliterated. So, you know, any alliteration typically sticks in your mind better. It's got a built-in fan base, people that, you know, patriotic is a positive image, you know, and, and super the, easy. It, like, yeah, it was just, it, it, it hit on multiple levels where it was a natural, a natural selection. Nice. And where is that where you kind of see, so it, Yelp, is that majority of the calls coming in now? Do you see it come? Do you guys track that? Yeah, we track every single, every single call that comes in, we track where it came from. Um, and so Yelp is still our, you know, our biggest category, uh, next door is I think our fastest growing. Mm. Um, We've been getting a lot of business from next door. Um, word of mouth is big. Now that we have almost 30 trucks on the road, trucks are big. Sure. Um, next door is a little scary. I mean, that you have to be a good company <laughs> to get to play in next door. Is, yeah. That, that, that weeds out the bad ones. Well, especially because you quick. can't see. Like, you, you, don't, you don't know. You, you can't you, reply. You know somebody said something, but you can't see what it was or who said it. Or, like, mm-hmm. it, there's a lot of anonymity to it from the business owner side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where things um, get real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that. Those are those are a lot of our our biggest drivers. A lot of it too is just like I get really, I really like sort of the business development side and getting involved in in the community and networking groups and things like that too. So like we we get a lot of just personal network customers as well. That those seem to you know just like any word of mouth referral, they multiply quickly. So is it pretty overwhelming for you to manage all those different platforms between looking at the, you know, the website, social media, next door. Um, I know you can only be a next door if you're in that neighborhood, but has it been difficult to kind of manage all that on top of obviously your, I mean, it's part of your day to day, but there's so many, and there's so many things that go into now, each one of those. Cause at least for me, that's like, that's part of the fun stuff, you know? So, but that actually makes it harder too. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Because I know that I like doing that stuff, but I have to constantly remind myself to not right. get stuck in it because I could look up and hours have passed like right. shit. Right. <laughs> there's people I need to, there's things, there's other things that need to be done. You know what I mean? That are, you know, that's a priority too, but that's not as much a priority as say a email back or a phone call back or something. No, I, I, and I think part of what makes it less overwhelming too is just because of, of the team we have right now and, and how, how segmented we have different duties and responsibilities and, and especially that like I'm not super involved in the operational side of the business anymore. So I've got, I have time to focus on these other things and really pour effort into them. Um, so now, yeah, overwhelming is definitely not a word I would use. Yeah. So do you manage the Instagram that we first met you on? Uh, I used to, now it's sort of split between, uh, me and Rebecca, our, uh, our, my assistant on staff. So she's doing a lot of it lately. Nice. And, so she, cool. and she's, and she's, and she's, she's way better at hashtags. I, I was getting ha- hashtag <laughs> education from her about how I was doing it all wrong. That's awesome. <laughs> how is, how is that paid off for you guys? Uh, I'm taking Instagram serious anyway. Yeah, so I think that's more of a fun hobby um, than it is a, a business development tool. I think it's a confirmation tool. Like I think people will go to it after they've already found us somewhere else and be like, okay, they're legit or that, okay, they look like they're, they're fun or they look like, you know, they, they have lots of experience because we're seeing all sorts of different cool things on their Instagram tool. I don't, to my knowledge, we've never had a single customer call and say, we found you on Instagram. Sure. And, and there was even a period where like, I would get, I would like consciously like every picture tagged atex with a swimming pool in it or things like that thinking like i could like lure people in and, and i don't think we've ever got gotten a customer we get what's funny is we get lots of pool companies from around the country that will call us and just start like asking for advice or you know sort of help on different things um so we've gotten we've gotten a lot of attention in the swimming pool community but mm-hmm. not from customers <laughs> yeah well i think it's a it's a good brand awareness and it's just another good tool to have in your bag you know it's like having that icon in your signature, it's just another thing that people can go back to and be like, Oh wow. Right. This is really cool. You get a good inside look, uh, the people that work for you and you get to, if you guys do stories or anything like that, it's a real kind of fun and cool look inside. But I think it's definitely getting a lot more serious. I started using Instagram like way back when it first started and I never thought I would see where it's at now where it's just everybody's on it. You know what I mean? People wake up, four o'clock in the morning it's like the first thing that they're drawn to it's like right oh what am I, let's see Can barely see, see how many it. likes i have <laughs> how many people followed me between now and you know four hours ago you know what i mean it's just it's crazy the statistics that they've been showing on when people are like checking this stuff where they right. they look at it at 11 or midnight and then somehow they are they're back on it at like four and five it's the first thing that they're looking at when they you know open their eyes it's pretty it's pretty crazy it's pretty crazy probably not looking at their kids or just like, no, where's my, where the hell's my phone at? <laughs> Somebody take my cell phone. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, so Instagram hasn't had a major impact. It's just been kind of a fun little, it, it hasn't, it's been, I mean, it, it, it actually helps, has, has helped us attract employees too. We've had, we've had people direct message us through Instagram and say, Hey, are y'all hiring? Like, you know, cause they're, they, mm-hmm. they think it's cool or putting up on there. Yeah. I think it's been really cool actually seeing so many pool companies on here because we can see how other people do stuff. And it's been really motivating to see people do things a certain way. I'm like, oh, I never thought about it that way or seeing the tools that they use. Right. Um, so it's been it's been a, it's helped us out quite a bit just seeing how other people do stuff. And it's kind of a trade off where we could maybe, you know, share some things that we do. And vice versa, you know, we're getting something from them right. unless they come in just a little, little too crazy where they want everything. Right. You know what I mean? No, I, but I, I, I think that's <laughs> definitely true. The eye opening piece of like how other people are doing it. Um, and, and, and yeah, the networking within the industry is, is again, which I, I mentioned I'm a big believer in, but the, like we had last week at our Monday meeting, a company from Dallas come down who found us on Instagram and just like watch how we do our, our staff meetings. Um, so it's interesting connections through Instagram. Huh? So you watched that through their... Well, they, they found us on Instagram and, and we started talking months ago and he and the owner had come down and we'd like gotten lunch before and just talked shop. Uh, and then he, last week, he brought his operations manager and his office manager down uh, for our 7.30 a.m. Monday meeting and hung out through that and then hung out through the whole morning and just sort of shadowed our different management people in the office. Nice. Wow, that's awesome, man. And then let's move into that a little bit because, you know, I think you... You have a big, um, support, you're a big supporter of like networking. And I think, you know, that's been a crazy important thing now, especially with the podcast. I mean, 
the, the Instagram's opened us up to so many people on so much different avenues and we've learned so much already you know we've we've all we've kind of gotten into a community a little bit you know through that whatsapp and you know we've been able to talk around that like why do you feel it's so important to network and communicate why are you so open to helping other companies the so so on the on the the network piece i feel like there's so many you know collectively we've all had so many different experiences while all trying to achieve the same thing that it would be like stupid not to share them um and and save each other the hassle of 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 mistakes we've all experienced so so i'm a a huge proponent of that at every level like when it was when i was a one-man pool company i was an ipsa going to every single ipsa event i could go to getting involved on the board doing anything i could to put myself in a situation where i was around as many people trying to do the same thing as i was doing and like you know living those experiences um and and then you know as now at the point where i'm not working on pools myself every day i'm trying to find that exact same model with business owners. And I want to be around as many business owners as I can be around to share, you know, the, just the universal experiences that, that, that we all have. Um, as far as like sharing with other companies, I just, I don't know. I just root for other people. I feel like, I feel like there's people that root for people and there's people that, that don't. And I don't ever want to be categorized as the kind of person that doesn't root for other people. So like, if I can help, I want to help. And it's just, I don't know. That's just hard wire, I guess. There's gotta be a lot of give and take in that. So do you usually try to make sure that they have a, at least a little something to offer, uh, you know, that come into these groups? Because I think it's difficult if, you know, you're this type of company and there's somebody that doesn't have as much experience and they could just be in there just kind of sucking everybody dry. I, I feel like there's like levels of appropriateness sure. to, to the ask where if somebody, if somebody's, if some random pool company calls me and wants to answer a question, I'm going to, I'm going to answer it. You know, I'm, if somebody, if they're going to call me every three days, I'm going to stop answering questions. Like, <laughs> like there's, you know, there's, there's, there's just a, a I don't know, so, social norms, I guess. Uh, respect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Level of respect. Personal, Hopefully you personal can space. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause they got, you have to understand too, that, you know, you're extremely busy and, right. and so are we, there's, you know, there's a little bit that we can, you should be asking me where to find information probably is probably the, one of the best things to do. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, I can't a- answer every single question, but you know, ask me the right ones so that I can help you at least get on track and you know, where you can find, you know, more information. Well, in, in specific in our industry, I feel like one of the most important pieces of like why I want to share knowledge I might've gained or experiences I might've had as well is that like, like we mentioned earlier with the one polar that starts that doesn't have his business figured out. And he just wants to do the technical job and thinks he can make more money, but he's, he's really sort of driving himself into the ground. You know, if we can, if we can help that person become more professional where then they're justifying charging a higher rate, uh, you know, it, to me, like the better the industry is, the better off we all are because we're, we, we can justify higher prices and, and, and have better quality of life for us and everybody we employ and that surrounds us. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, sort of the rising tide raises all ships. So, so that's, you know, it's, it's selfless, but it's also very selfish, you know, in, in terms of the better he does, the better I do in my mind. Yeah. All boats float, man. And you just said you finished Michael's episode and X pools. Yeah, yeah. He had that know, exact, exact same, same message. Same, and yeah. I was like, yeah, I was like this, you know, he, 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 he gets it. And, and, and I feel like, yeah, there's, and I feel like there's a lot of people in our industry that do. Um, sadly, there's many that don't, but, um, but I feel like we need to, we need to keep reading that. And that's why I feel like it's important if, if you know if, if if you've got something to share share it and and hopefully that will continue to multiply and you know it makes makes for a healthier industry for sure love that yeah i mentioned uh will from bullfrog pool service you know earlier and i he's actually one he's become one of my good contacts i think you know through instagram and being able to talk with him and he's in north carolina and like everything is done so different than here so it's super cool to hear that and then hear from hear you from austin you know um he he kind of wanted me to ask this question is right it's on here so you know now that you know what you know you know what would you go back to the beginning and change from being in one polar to moving through you know where you are now that's that's a really good question um I, th- I think I wasn't aggressive enough at first in terms of finding that brand and coming up with an actual strategy. I was, I was too complacent and just, uh, things will work themselves out. You know, I'll just keep cleaning pools and it'll work out. I, I, I feel like in order to grow, you've got to pursue that growth. And, and it took me five years to figure out, wait, I actually have to pursue this. 
And so, and I, and I don't regret that time because it was the, the years I was just one guy cleaning pools. I had a blast. I mean, it was, mm. it was, you know, there's a lot worse things you could be doing than cleaning pools in Austin, Texas. <laughs> um, and so, but, but I, I think, you know, from a straight up business perspective, I'd probably, you know, would have hoped I'd come to that realization earlier. Um, yeah, I only spent three years doing it instead of five. <laughs> <laughs> but what actually nudged you into that direction? Was it just time? Um, I think that was that was part of it. I also I just recently had kids. Um, that's part of it. Uh, there it is. The boom. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I think you know. Also, also too, just like once once you once you get, I got to the point where I, ha- I had one person, and I had somebody that outside of my family that I felt responsible for as well. I was like, well, how can I continue to find, you know, basically make them more comfortable, make, you know, create a more stable environment here and then do that for more people. Like, I don't know, just, I think kids plus employees, like all started happening at one time. And it was like, okay, now I sort of get it. I feel like we can, we can do more of this and, and get it figured out. Yeah. You almost feel responsible, you know, for, providing for all these people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, oh, a, yeah. that's a huge, a huge piece of, of what we do. That was a huge, like come to <laughs> realization moment for us too. And we started to have like multiple people underneath us and we we're like, Whoa, like what we do affects multiple people, <laughs> you know, yeah. not just ourselves anymore. For sure. Um, like I, like, I mean, is, is, is a, and I guess sort of answering this question, this is more of like biggest mistake kind of thing. And this has happened very recently. Like I made a huge mistake with software. I just wasted a gigantic amount of money on something that's not going to come to fruition. And, and I carry, I carry like lots of guilt about that on multiple levels uh, of, you know, that's, you know, it was multiple people's worth of salary that we could have added to the company or, you know, uh, you know, I, there's, there's the, the, the personal side of it, the, the selfish side of like, these are cool things I could have done with that money, but there's also how much more opportunity could we have created in the company uh, using that, that money in some other way. Sure. Um, and so, so, you know, all those decisions end up coming back to that. Like there's the emotional pull, um, and not just the, the, the logical and tactical piece of it. That must've been really difficult because you were just trying to do the right thing in building a software that would make everybody's lives easier. And all it actually ended up doing was costing you a ton of money and a ton of time too, and a ton yeah. of time to try and develop something that was, you know, just for, you know, you and your team. So was it really them just kind of dragging their feet on developing this software or were you kind of asking for something that was, I think there were multiple blind spots I had that, um, I was overconfident and didn't see one. It was a new software. First mistake, uh, um, the company or the, the product. So oh. the comp- company was not new, but the product that had been developed was a new product. Oh, okay. Um, so that, that of course means there are developers that don't have tons of experience building it. Uh, I then made a poor decision with my developer, which I, I've, I've, I've found to be very common um, with software. Um, now that it's one of those things like, well, why didn't anybody tell me this beforehand? Because now everybody's very open with their, oh, yeah, <laughs> I had the awful development mistakes. I didn't even know that. <laughs> the, <laughs> and, uh, and so there were, there were just multiple layers of uh, overconfidence and blind spots and, and poor decision making and just bad luck. You know, it, it, it you know, I think that's a big piece. Uh, Lux, a, well, you know, a big piece, good or bad, in a lot of ways, of what we're doing. But the, I, I didn't put the places in piece for for the good luck to to show up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how long did it take before you were just like, I got to pull the cord on this because I don't have time for this anymore? So, uh, eight, about eight months. A in. Long time, right? Yeah, yeah. Eight, eight months in. Oh, um, wow. Did finally, you know you weren't getting your money back? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it, 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 and this has all been in like the last month that I've just acknowledged to myself, like what a big mistake it was, um, that I finally pulled the plug on it and we're just going to eat another year of licenses for the software. Um, you know, it, it happened time wise where, uh, we ended up just purchasing a warehouse that, that was semi only semi planned. And so, you know, we're also just more cash poor than normal. So it's not like we could start over with development even if we wanted to, but I, I don't think that would be a good decision, uh, with the knowledge I have now. But the, the ego side is the, is the, like the big hit, like, I mean, you know, the money's a gigantic hit. Like there's, there's no, it, it was a shit ton of money, but there's also the ego side of like, man, I, I really screwed that up. Like, am I going to screw anything else up? Uh, or, you know, plus I, I highly publicized 
uh, the move we were making. So right. then there's also yeah. the egg on the face of, you know, hey, we're making this big, amazing move nobody else is making. Never mind. That was a big mistake. Um, so what do you think you could have done to avoid that situation? Uh, I th- it I seems like a difficult one because I know the company you're talking about. Yeah. And they're a big company and you wouldn't you would think that they would have been able to produce what you were asking. Um, well, it, it's not them. I mean, it's, it's all outside development. So, so like it's a, it's a funky model. Um, but the, I, I don't, I don't know there was, I mean, I feel, I feel like that's sort of the nature of entrepreneurship and what we're doing. Like the school of hard knocks is an expensive school. Yeah. Uh, I just, I just blew a lot more in the school of hard knocks in the software than I did on college. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, that's, I think that's part of it. You know, there's been lots of those little lessons, you know, that start with like, I, I just, screwed up that that heater i'm gonna go buy a guy a new heater like you know this was just a much larger version of that um there's a lot of heaters yeah (laughs) i I, I don't know that uh i don't know that there were that there was an easy path out i think it was just what do you think the reason for it was you think you were blinded a little bit by certain things or you just were in so you were so needy or in so much need eager for like a software to actually do what you wanted to do yeah i i think i think uh multiple levels i think uh needing to find a solution that I don't see out there on the market currently um, that does everything we need it to do is, is pool professionals uh, or even just home service professionals at scale. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's ones like Jobber, like we talked about earlier, you guys use, we've used for the last four years, Jobber's amazing. But at the scale we're at right now, it's not, even even Jobber told us like, hey, you're graduating out of Jobber. Like, and, you know, we're sorry, <laughs> we can't we can't help right now. Um, like. <laughs> The, Jobber's so cool. Who the, says that? Yeah, <laughs> Jobber is cool. <laughs> so freaking cool. You guys kick ass. Uh, <laughs> the uh, that combined with just I think overconfidence. Like we've been very fortunate. Every almost every move we've made in the history of Patriot has ended up being a good move. I think one there was some cockiness that like oh nothing can go wrong, um, and two it was just like starting to get the assumption that things just go right and they don't always go right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you think that was, I mean, it's been pretty humbling for you and oh, you've ab- kind of taken absolutely. a step back like in general for the whole business, taking on the second look at a bunch of things or, um, not in other aspects of our current business, but in future decision making, like there is a new level of, um, I think vulnerability mm-hmm. that will go into decision making, um, that, and, and I think more, um, patience and, you know, if it's a big move, you don't need to rush into it. Um, I feel like we've, we've rushed into several big moves. Um, most of which have really played to our benefit, but this one, this one came back to bite us. Mm. Good. The good news is we've, you know, built over time, a business that's been financially stable enough where we could, we could take that hit, you know? Um, and that's, that's something that we've, we've actually talked to our, our team about is like, you know, you work in a place that's stable enough where we can make some big moves and if they don't work, like everybody still has, very stable jobs. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's a lot of companies that couldn't have taken that hit. They would have folded. Um, but you know, we're trying to build a really solid foundation of what we're doing. That's pretty cool of you, man. I, you know, even for you to realize it. And I think I can see it, you know, nobody, nobody can see your face right now except for us, but I could see it in your eyes and in your, in your demeanor, you know, that, it that it really hurt a little bit deep down, you know, more not, and not just your, not your wallet. I think, you know, cause you can, I can see it in your eyes that it's, it's, you, it, you felt bad because it hurt your team and it hurt that development of what you, you know, your product that you're putting out there. And, you know, for you to be able to admit that and try to do something different and move on, I think that's, that's very, speaks really highly of your character. That's one of the hardest things because you can't get that time back. Right. And w- especially when you have a vision of something that you think is just going to be, make everyone's life easier and you're the one that bring it to the table. And it's just like, finally, I needed this break. This is going to make all our problems go away. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the worst part is being like the snake oil salesman without realizing where you're, you know, you're, you're selling to your team. Like, this is going to be amazing. Like we are building, we're going to be the pinnacle of, of, <laughs> you know, how pool service companies operate. And it's like, <laughs> Oh, never mind, That was a mistake. Dude, is there like a black <laughs> cloud over our industry and software? Oh, like what is the issue? Probably man. That software is rough. <laughs> I mean, how many, how many different softwares you got, you think you're using right now? Several. I mean, we do lots of, PDF editing, we do Slack, we do Jobber, we do obviously QuickBooks. Uh, we what else do we use? We have a, a service we use for our fleet management. We have a Bamboo HR we use for all of our HR tracking stuff. Um, I mean, we've we're we pay so many subscription fees for so many different <laughs> things that like 
Seriously, it needs like its own like bank account, yeah. just <laughs> so you can track it all. That's crazy. So that's, that's kind of your you know, biggest struggle or mistake. You know, have you had a mentor? You know, that's helped you through the business. I know you're in some groups and stuff, but have you had like a personal mentor through your life and then and in business or? Yeah, I, I think uh, in business, I've had a, I've had a couple. Um, it's straight industry related. Um, Jim Smith with Aquaman in Austin. He's a, a been around the industry for a long time. He's, he was the guy that I was the one on the other side of the phone calling him every three days, asking him a question, being the the over asker. Um, <laughs> and he he was just totally cool with it and and would selflessly give you know endless time. Seemingly, uh, it's not just me. I know he was like every dude that's been in Ipsa and Austin had that guy on speed dial. Um, and so he he was a, a big uh, a big educator for me coming up in the industry, coming in totally ignorant to, to swimming pools. Um, currently I've got a, a, a mentor I work with uh, strictly on the business side. Uh, he owns a really large HVAC company in Austin. Uh, and so he's uh, a little bit older than I am. A, a probably a company that's about 10 times the size of mine. Um, and we meet once a month and just hang out on his back porch. And, you know, he lets me, sort of vent about what's going on and, and we'll help, uh, you know, not, not necessarily advise, um, since he's not, you know, fully aware of everything going on, you know, day to day in the company, but he'll just share his experiences and, uh, you know, let me sort of digest those and, and try to try to use them to my benefit. Nice. It's nice. I think it's really refreshing to talk to somebody that's not in the same industry as you. They have a totally different outlook and, People I talk to, it you know, family events or networking events or anything like that. It's really cool to see their twist on things and kind of makes you think differently. Like I never thought of it that way. That I, makes makes sense. Absolutely. And, and and what's really cool about this relationship specifically too, though, is the fact that like it's not the same industry, but he gets it because it's yeah. So it's service. Sort of, there's so many parallels that yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So how did you meet? Sorry if I didn't hear this part. How did you actually find the first uh, gym? Yeah, uh, just through Ipsa. Just through he Ipsa. Was, he was our, I guess he was our chapter vice president when I joined, and then became our chapter president. I served on the board with him when he was president, president, and just got to know him over the years through Ipsa. That's really awesome of him. I mean, like he had no problem handing his number out and that he, just answering questions. I, I don't know how he ever actually made money because he was just on the phone as tech <laughs> support to every every <laughs> other pool guy in Austin. Wow, is he still around? Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. Let's call him. Where is it? Where's the phone? <laughs> <laughs> Ask him some questions. <laughs> now this is a Gary V YouTube show. Yeah. Let's call him up. You're on with the pool chasers <laughs> and Hal Denbar from Patriot Pool and Swan. So, oh, hell yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> Ask away. <laughs> I figured you'd say that. That's awesome. <laughs> so obviously with all this, you know, craziness going on, is there anything that you do for fun? Anything that keeps your mind right? You know, reading podcasts, you know, mountain um, biking. So I'd say the last 12 months is like the first time that the word hobby has even become a possibility because like <laughs> Patriot's been my hobby for, you know, over a decade. Um, I've been trying to work out a little bit and get healthier because I've ever since leaving the field, I've just gotten fat and lazy. And, and so <laughs> trying to trying to get get back in shape a little bit and then uh, trying to get into golf. I don't know that it's going to stick, but trying to find some sort of you know, thing outside of work. And and I think entrepreneurship in general is sort of a, a hobby of mine. I just am mm -hmm. constantly trying to seek out other business owners. And I'm just fascinated by hearing like one that you can make money that way. Like what, that, that, that's a business. And like, I want to learn every single little, you know, nut and bolt to that business. Um, and so that's, that's definitely a, a huge interest of mine is just hunting down other entrepreneurs in Austin and trying to learn from them. Yeah, even if you don't do anything with it, I think it's just so interesting. I mean, it really is a hobby in itself, just, you know, reading interviews by other entrepreneurs or listening to an entrepreneur's experience, you know, like how NPR guy Raz and how I built this, mm -hmm. yeah. talking to these bigger companies. It's just really cool to hear their story and their take on things and all the experiences. It's a lot of fun. I like yeah. listening to all that I, stuff. I listen to that all day. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any podcast, you know, besides Pool Chasers that uh, you, know, <laughs> you listen to? Uh, I, I haven't. I, historically, I've not been a huge podcast guy because they weren't back in days when I was in the field all day. It was more just like sports talk radio because podcasts weren't hugely a thing yet. I've been listening. I have How I Built This for sure. And then I'm, I'm trying to think of the name. of it. It's about the Supreme Court. It's been really fascinating. Uh, like 
seminal court cases through and how they've shaped U.S. culture. I can't think of the name of it offhand. Um, that sounds like a history one. Yeah, but it's it's, it's been a pretty cool one. Um, That's cool. <laughs> and there's so many podcasts now, especially that are getting into that. Yeah, pull the, gonna, pull the phone out. Yeah. Yeah. Pull the phone yeah. out. Because <laughs> it, it is an awesome podcast. It's one worth listening to. Is it like one of the top 100? I don't think so. Some uh, More Perfect is what it's called. Wow, I've never heard of More that. Perfect. It's all about yeah. the Supreme Court and just cases that you've never heard of that like we do things the way we do them today because of these cases. Oh, really? That's cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, sounds cool. Any books you'd recommend? Uh, Traction, uh, for sure. I think I mentioned that earlier. Heck like yeah. that is that is totally reshaped the way we do business at Patriot. Uh, it's basically a playbook of how to run your business that has been proven out countless times with countless businesses. Um, that's why we use it, brothers. It's It's awesome. That's crazy how much of an impact that book has had mm-hmm. on so many yeah. people's business. Well, it's created a whole cottage industry. I mean, you've got you've got implementers out there that are consultants that are charging five six k a day to mm-hmm. come in and, and teach and, it and teach it in your business. Um, which, by the way, we, yeah, we've we've self implemented because we we don't have any money after our software, <laughs> but um, but it's a uh, yeah. <laughs> But it's cool. I mean, because he's set it up that way. You know, you can definitely self implement it, and then you know, if you want to, and you have the money to, as a big corporation, you can bring that in and do it. It's kind of cool. It doesn't. He doesn't push that. It's just there, and yeah. you know, it's it's written to where you can dissect it yourself and implement certain things of it. And then if you want to move hundred percent into that, you know, IDS level stuff, then you, know, right. you have to maybe maybe hire That's somebody to teach you. But you know, you can implement a lot of it just by reading the book. Yeah. It's one of the very few books that i've read or listened to that just clicks right away yeah. like you get like quarter way through it and you're like holy crap like this is yeah. gonna this just my world just changed yeah and like you, you have I, no choice it's like the point of no return you're like <laughs> oh i gotta wake everybody up yeah. like we're making some major changes tonight <laughs> yeah. and you and i you know greg and i are a lot different in a lot of ways and we don't read a lot of the same books or listen to a lot of the same things and as soon as he like recommended that we started reading and I was like, Oh my God. I'm like, dude, and this, that's the first like real thing we clicked on like together. <laughs> that is so crazy. Now that I'm remembering this, we had a customer, they were only around for like three or four months. I went to an initial bid and we started talking and we were cool. They're probably about 20 years older than me, but they were like, you know, let me get your number. We should meet up for lunch sometime or something like that. Met up for lunch and we were talking and he recommended uh, traction. He's like, Great. yeah, this is a really good book. You know, if there was any book I'd recommend, I think you ought to check this one out. And I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, you seem like, you know, what you're talking about. And I bought it and I actually listened to it and I was just blown away. But this person, they like left, they like moved out of their house and we didn't service their pool anymore. They're like, Hey, we appreciate it, but we're moving <laughs> back up. Yeah. And it's like, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, dude, is that like a freaking angel the, or some the shit? traction fairy? Yeah. yeah. Had to have been, like man. just came in and said, here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need a break. Hand delivered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that was a, uh, was a yeah. trip. Cause that we love was, that book. but that's the power of like talking. Cause I think I asked him like, Hey, you know what? It looks like, you know what you're doing. Is there any books? Is there anything that, could really help us out. I mean, we have a good thing going on and we have a good handle on stuff, but we need to get, we need to get organized and we need to have a vision and we need to set goals. It's one thing to know you need to do those things, but there needs to be some guidance and some structure to get you to a point to where that stuff makes sense. And just listening to that for all you listeners, if you don't, you know, buy the book, I don't know how much it is right now, 20, 30 bucks. I'd pay knowing Mm -hmm. what we know now, I'd probably pay like five grand for that book. It's, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, that, I, I feel like that's underselling it almost. Like it's, yeah. it, it, it's so impacted the way we do business. I mean, at our, at our leadership level, and now we, we run it in our repair department as well. And our goal is for this quarter to try to finish rolling it out for the entire company. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the culture, right? I mean, yeah. you, you start when you, when you read that and your eyes open to like, okay, like, oh, man, I totally get why this guy is in the wrong spot, right? Or vice versa. Like, I, I shouldn't be doing this. This is not this is not my role. Like, this guy should be doing this or this person should be doing this. And being able to delegate that, it, that helped kind of me let go of, like, some of the last stuff. You know what I mean? Like, that, this is our baby. Like, that helped me kind of be like, okay, well, I can't do that anymore. Right. You know, it's, it's a pretty good book. But you're going to hear stuff that you probably – you yeah. don't want to hear because I think it's all <laughs> there's so many things within that book that are in the back of your mind that you you know are there and you don't want to accept, but you hear it 
and you start hearing him explain why these things are important, you're like, oh, definitely have to yeah. make some tough choices. Well, yeah. and, well and, and you have to go to a level of transparency and vulnerability in your business with with people you have on your team that mm -hmm. like I was I was so anxious leading up to our initial meeting where I was going to just, you know, totally open up our books and like delve into things that, you know, it had only existed inside my brain. I hadn't, you know, hadn't been shared that you got to share in order to to hit new levels mm -hmm. of productivity. Uh, yeah, it's it's not it's not an easy no. Easy process to, no. <laughs> to, to jump into. That's cool, though. Has your team read Traction, like your management team? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we run level 10 meetings, for, you know, which is Traction speak. But, like, yeah, we do it every week. We do quarterly off-site meetings. We, um, we, I mean, we are engaged in it on a weekly basis. And our repair our repair department is, too. They have meetings every Thursday. Um, and they do quarterly off-site now. And, and they're fully engaged in it. You know, it's so crazy how That's some things cool. don't stick. Since we read that book and we rolled out, like, the IDS and the level 10, We've never not done that. Right. Like once we started it, however many, almost it's probably less. Ago, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Almost yeah. a year ago since we made that jump, like we've never done it any other way. Yeah. Like it's so second nature. Like there's some things that just fade out, but that is like one thing that has been consistent with time. Absolutely. So I'll give you the opportunity how to plug Patriot pools. One thing I'd be really cool. You can talk about your website because I know I was at your website. I've been there before, but over the weekend, I was rewatching that video you guys have on there. And I think it's, I think that video is awesome. I don't, I'm sure you're the one that filmed it, edited it or whatever. We actually hired a company out of California that was like dirt cheap to come do it. And oh, it was, no way. It only cost us like $2,000. No way. Um, but that was, that's one of the best investments we've ever made as a company. Um, oh, that video is, it's really good. And it really, I don't know, just talking to you a little bit tells a lot about your company. And it looks like it mirrors it very well. So anyway, I'll let you plug everything that Patriot Pools has and hopefully everyone can check it out. Yeah. I mean, so, so our website is simply PatriotPoolAndSpa.com, all spelled out as one long word. Um, so and is spelled out. And uh, I mean, you know, if you're listening, feel free to reach out. Uh, I, I love connecting with other people in the industry. So so I'm always game for that. Um, and uh, I guess it, one other thing I, I would like to talk about real quick is Collins Hope. And and because I, I, I don't think we've mentioned that earlier. It's a, a drowning prevention nonprofit that we've really gotten involved with in the last year. And it's such a, you know, hugely impactful cause for us spe industry specific because uh, there's so many things we can be doing to to better protect our customers and their kids. Um, so collinshope.org is their website. Um, you know, people that aren't aware of it, but drowning is the number one cause of accidental death for kids under five. Uh, in Texas already since January 1st this year, we've lost 21 kids to drowning, fatal drowning. Um, and so that's that's an issue that I think uh, our, our industry should be championing, and we're not, uh, or at least we're not doing it well enough. Uh -huh. um, and so Collins Hope is, is not the only drowning prevention organization out there. Um, but in general, I would encourage anybody to, to you know, look into Collins Hope, look into any other organizations they may find uh, specific to drowning prevention and you know, educate yourself on it, educate your staff on it, because there's there's so many little steps we can take as the professional in a backyard, whether it's pulling toys out of, uh, you know, the pool, because that's that's going to be a leading cause that's going to attract small children to the pool or, you know, being super diligent about gates. Uh, you know, obviously, if drains or drain covers are missing, taking that, you know, as deathly serious as it is, um, you know, that's that's something that has become uh, a bit of a passion project uh, of mine of late. And, and I would encourage anyone else listening to to actively engage in it as well. Yeah, we're really glad that you brought that up. And we were talking about this um, before we started recording and wasn't really thinking about it too much. But I think this needs to be one of those things that we every pool service and repair builder, manufacturer, everybody needs to be on social media and really push that content out. So that, you know, homeowners and anybody else that has a pool or around a pool, we just need to be more aware that this is a serious issue. This isn't a joke. Like this is stuff that happens on a regular basis where, you know, kids, babies, there's all kinds of people out there that are losing their lives or, you know, having brain damage or going deaf or something like that. Um, so this is major and we all need to participate in making people aware that, you know, we got to do whatever it takes to you know, not let this stuff happen anymore. Absolutely. Because, because our, our, the, the product that we touch and service is the number one culprit. You know, if you look at drowning statistics, swimming pools are, are always leading the pack. Um, so, you know, we're, we're the people that can make the difference. Right. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing that, man. You know, we just really appreciate you 
take the time while you're down in Arizona. Come join us on the podcast. It's been a pleasure, honor. You know, I've got a lot of respect for you and your company, you know, throughout, you know, our conversations and things. And I'm great. And I have talked about you guys several times and, you know, Thank you so much, you know, for taking the time out of your day. Well, thanks, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's fun getting to hang out with the uh, the the Instagram celebrities that I spotted in San Diego. So. <laughs> thanks, brother. <laughs> thanks, thanks, y'all. Man. Thank you guys so much for listening. We truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to support the podcast. We hope you learned something from this episode. As always, take what you can, apply it to your business. Everybody has different opinions and different needs, so we hope you found something in this episode today that you can apply and grow your business. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. It's poolchasers.info at gmail.com. And you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Our tag and handle is poolchasers. So I want to read a review here from our our friend Preox Clean. It says, as a rookie in the world of pool cleaning, this podcast has been a lifesaver. Greg and Tyler are fantastic in the way they put this together. It is very entertaining while at the same time extremely beneficial. Thanks, guys, for all the hard work with the podcast and Instagram. Keep it up. Thank you. We appreciate your comments, and you know we're glad you guys are getting entertained a little bit out there while you're servicing your pools or repairs or what you're doing. We truly respect you guys and what you do, and you know it's an honor for us to host this and be a part of your community. So thank you again for taking the time to listen. Please, 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 if you could rate and review us on iTunes, that would be greatly appreciated, and we hope you guys have a great week. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.